call this uh, hearing to order. And uh, before I begin, let me acknowledge the uh, presence of Senator Robin Padilla. Good afternoon, sir. And uh, let me direct the uh, committee secretary to acknowledge your source persons for today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon and good afternoon also to Senator Robin and our resource persons. For the public hearing on the Matatag curriculum of the Department of Education, we would like to acknowledge our resource persons from the Department of Education or DepEd. We have Director Jocelyn D. R. Andaya, Director Laila Ariola, Director Edward Jimenez, Ms. Isabel A. Victorino, and Mr. Ruel S. Pedernal. We have also invited the principals and schools division offices of some of the pilot schools. From NCR, we have Muzon Elementary School. We have Dr. Cecil G. Carandang, the schools division superintendent of Malabon City SDO, and Dr. Ronald P. Santiago, OIC school principal of Muzon Elementary School, together with Dr. Ernest Joseph Cabrera, Dr. Josefina Pablo, Dr. Eliseo Raimundo, Dr. Hilda Valencia, Ms. Evelyn Caliada, and Ms. Elizabeth C. Aquino. For Luzon, we have Kawaya North Central School. We have Dr. Cherry S. Ramos, the Schools Division Superintendent of Kawayan City SDO, together with Ms. Gemma Bala. From Bis Visayas, we have Tabogon Central Elementary School. The Schools Division Office of Cebu Province is represented by Dr. Gladys Balegtas, the OIC Chief of the School Governance and Operations Division. From Mindanao, we have Siangan Elementary School. From the school's division office, we have Dr. Fernando A. Dones Jr. and Ms. Edna S. Mantilla, the school head of the Suyangan Elementary School. From the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, or PIDS, we have Dr. Michael Ralph Abrigo and Mr. Ed Marlingato. From Simeo Inotech, we have Dr. Josdado M. San Antonio. From the Second Congressional Commission on Education, we have the Executive Director, Dr. Carol Mark Ari. From the Philippine Normal University, or PNU, we have Dr. Jenny Hoxon and Dr. Alan S. Reyes. From the University of Santa Tomas College of Education, we have the Assistant Dean, Dr. Louis B. Dasas. From the Assessment Curriculum and Technology Research Center, or, or ACTRC, we have Dr. Nona Marlene B. Ferrido and Dr. Pam Robertson, who are both Deputy Directors. From the United Nations Children's Fund, or UNICEF Philippines, we have Dr. Excelsa C. Tongson and Assistant Professor Miriam I. Ugada. From the Coordinating Council of Private Educational Associations, or COCOPEA, we have Dr. Joselito Gutierrez, Dr. Felina P. Espique, Ms. Athena Grace Espino, and Attorney Joshua Alexander Calaguas. Last but not the least, from Rex Education, we have Mr. Levi Espinosa and Mr. John Paul Velasco. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I recognize also the presence of our minority leader, Senator Coco Pimentel. Thank, thank you for uh, coming, sir. Uh, today, we'll be conducting a motu proprio hearing on the implementation of the Matatag curriculum. Uh, the Matatag curriculum is probably the single most important reform that the Department of Education has undertaken in, in recent memory. And um, although during the pandemic we saw a reduction on the competencies uh, with the uh, implementation of the most essential comp learning competencies, but now it has been formalized through what we call the Matatag curriculum. And um, today we'll be discussing the features of the Matatag curriculum, the rationale on why we had to uh, reform the curriculum. And we all know curriculum is the most important um, uh, aspect of education because I call this as the software uh, that feeds into the brains of our learners. And our learners will be our future uh, workforce and future citizens of this country. So it's all the software that goes into the minds and the thoughts of our learners. So it's a very important facet of education and we have already uh, reformed it and now we're in the pilot testing and we want to also learn from the implementation implementers on the ground on, on, their, um, uh, on their thoughts and learnings uh, from this new um, curriculum. At the same time, uh, we will also talk about the challenges that that uh, we will be facing in the full implementation of the Matatag curriculum. Uh, in the, 
in 2024 no, uh, will be the um, uh, full implementation of the Matatag curriculum. And we want to understand what are the challenges that we are facing and what are the budgetary requirements that we will be needing in order to uh, see a, a, a successful implementation of this uh, uh, curriculum. At the same time, we also want to learn the rationale. Why do we... Uh, um, why did we have to um, revise the curriculum? And we invited some uh, experts from the uh, Assessment Curriculum and Technology Research Center, who I had an opportunity to um, uh, interact with them in the past. Uh, this actually, the team of uh, Dr. P Pam Robertson and Dr. Nona Frido uh, were actually invited here in Congress to, um, uh, here in Senate to uh, uh, share us, share with us their thoughts on uh, the old curriculum and what are the things that we need to to to, to improve on, to to reform in order to uh, to make our curriculum at par with the present times, and also to fix some of the gaps and the problems that we are encountering. So um, uh, they're actually, in in my understanding, the ACTRC is the sole organization that undertook a curriculum review. And this is in partnership, of course, with the DepEd. And they also made some suggestions that led to this new curriculum. So with that, uh, again, we'll focus on uh, the, uh, the Matatag curriculum, which is being pilot tested right now. And uh, we'll talk about uh, the implementation as we go along. But before that, we would like to hear an opening remark from our minority leader and then from our uh, distinguished uh, Senator, Senator Padilla. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and magandang hapon po sa lahat. So, uh, from the statement of our Chairman, I, uh, I get the impression that you are now implementing a new curriculum, ito na yung matatag curriculum, on a pilot basis. Okay, so give us feedback, ano na nangyayari. How long has this been ongoing on a pilot basis? And is it True? Is it correct? The, when the Secretary of Education said she's not an educator, she had no hand in uh, forming forming the Matatag curriculum. So please confirm that, that uh, in this hearing. Well, uh, totoo ba yun? That she really let that committee uh, operate uh, autonomously? Yan ang narinig ko sa speech niya mismo. So tell me if I'm wrong para lang, may, para lang maintindihan po natin. So I'm here to listen, uh, Mr. Chairman, para ang problema kasi hindi nyo kami ginawang member ng, uh, ng EDCOM 2. Eh. So, ayan, ayan ang problema. Kaya sa budget uh, hearing, nagugulat kami na uh, anong taan na, ba? na yung may bago ng curriculum, sa galing inputs nito. But I know, I, 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 I'm aware of a certain law, may curriculum committee tayo, eh. di ba? Uh, section... Three by you know, one of the oh, in in the, in, a, in a certain law that's that's uh, so. Sige, then we will uh, get to know how that committee works because we have a bill on how on at, at the appropriate levels. Sana turuan na natin ng computers coding skills sa ating mga. I hope you that committee uh, studied that angle and then I hope marinig sa matatag curriculum na. Meron tayong component na ganun. Sige, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Minority Leader. And uh, 21st century skills is one of the uh, pronounced features of the new curriculum. And we'll ask DepEd later on to, um, um, to, to give us some uh, explanation and some uh, uh, clarification on that. So, Senator Padilla. Maraming salamat po, Chairman. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Bismillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Isang magandang tanghali po sa ating uh, mahal na uh, Chairman, ang amin pong Einstein dito, Senator Wingat Chalian, at ang amin pong uh, Minority Floor Leader, ang aking kong hinahangaan, uh, Senator uh, Aquilino Pimentel Jr., ang aking Chairman, PDP Laban. At uh, sa inyo pong lahat, ako po ay uh, masyadong interesado dito sa matatag curriculum na to sapagkat sa salita pa lang matatag na eh. At uh, 
gusto ko pong magtanong lang mamaya patungkol si Arman sa kung ano po yung uh, sinasabi nito sa kasaysayan, sa paglalahat uh, ng kasaysayan. Dahil napakahalaga po ng kasaysayan para sa ating kabataan na malaman nila kung ano talaga saan tayo galing, ano ba talaga. Kasi lalo tayong magiging matatag. Sabi nga nila, kung alam natin kung ano yung pinagmulan natin. Kaya mamaya po magtatanong po ako, uh, masyado po akong interesado sa pag-uusapan natin. Maraming salamat po, Chairman. Thank you, Thank you Senator Padilla. And uh, with the permission of uh, my colleagues, uh, we'll start off with um, ACTRC just to set the tone and context. No? And this organization was uh, assigned to uh, review the old curriculum. Uh, they came up with a paper, which I read, actually. And uh, they identified some gaps, some weaknesses, some inconsistencies, and, some recon and, and, and made some recommendations on which this new curriculum of, was based on. So um, some of the members of ACTRC are, um, are uh, located in Australia. So they will be joining us via Zoom. And then um, some of the members are not present in Metro Manila now because of, um, of uh, some activities um, outside of uh, Metro Manila. But they're here with us to uh, shed light on uh, their work on the old curriculum, their analysis, and then what made them recommend um, uh, uh, reforms that were taken into consideration in the new curriculum. So we call on Dr. Frido who is with us via Zoom. Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Senator Wien, Senator Coco, and Senator Tobin. Um, we will, to make the, the our press, we really didn't prepare for the presentation, but we can always share with you the recommendations and accompanying basis of that. So I requested Dr. Pam Roberts Robertson to share the recommendations. And if there are questions or if the gaps that are being addressed may have not been uh, shared completely, then I can give some more details. I hope that will be all right, sir. Yes, yes. So we will uh, call on Dr. Pam Robertson. Yes. who's also a member of the ACTRC, the Assessment Curriculum and Technology Research Center. I think she's located in uh, Australia right now. So she's with us um, via Zoom. So we recognize Dr. Robertson. Thank you, Senator. And thank you, everyone, for allowing us to be here today. It's um, very... Um, it gives us a great feeling of honour that you are able to um, listen to our research findings and that you find them useful. The key finding out of our curriculum review was that teachers were having difficulty implementing the previous curriculum and that students were having difficulty learning it. That led to some problems for Philippine society because students were leaving school without the required skills and knowledge to succeed at further education or in employment. So our findings hinged around what was making it difficult for teachers to deliver the curriculum and for students to learn it. One of the key findings was that there were simply too many learning competencies in the curriculum. For some grade levels, there was up to um, maybe 3,000 different things that they were expected to learn in a year, and there were often around 1,000. That's a lot of different things to expect a learner to learn and to for teachers to have time to give them really good coverage so that the students truly embed an understanding. So one of the recommendations was that the curriculum was uh, streamlined and slimmed down with fewer learning competencies. Another recommendation was that in some areas there were issues with sequencing, which meant that students' knowledge wasn't building step on step as they went through the grades. 
and um, working with the Bureau of Curriculum Development, we identified a number of areas where that was the case. And um, that is one of the things that the new curriculum is hoping to achieve. It's hoping to streamline and refine those so that they're a little easier to implement. Along with revising the sequencing, we found that sometimes the clarity of expression of the curriculum was such that it was difficult for teachers to know exactly what they were supposed to be teaching and to know exactly what the students, what skills and knowledge the students needed to gain. So there were some areas where the clarity of expression needed to be improved. Similarly, there was some concerns around the cognitive demand of some of the learning competencies. In the previous basic education curriculum, many of the learning competencies were at a very low level of cognitive demand. It was almost at a memorisation level. The, um, cur the, the current curriculum was... Um, the, the cognitive demand was increased in reaction to that. And it seems that in some areas it went a little too much to the higher order thinking skills and didn't give students time to develop very basic skills well before starting to build on. So that was an issue a little bit around sequencing and a little bit around balancing. Students need to have some time where they're memorising and learning the basics off by heart. They need to have some time where they're practising performing fairly routine tasks before you can really give them those high cognitive demand tasks. So it was a little bit about balancing that. Through adjusting sequencing and clarity of expression and cognitive demand, it's hoped that the sequencing of skills is developed to ensure that students develop the prerequisite skills and knowledge systematically from one grade to the next to the next. We hope that that will improve the proportion of students who enter each topic that they're starting with the relevant prerequisite skills and knowledge. That's really important because we found in our research that teachers were more likely to have trouble having time to teach something if the students entered that grade and that topic without the prerequisite skills and knowledge. So it's really important that students build skills in a really consolidated way systematically as they move through the grades. And where we found that that wasn't happening, um, it became even more difficult for the teachers to, to teach the curriculum and for the students to learn it. Uh, so with that in mind, the recommendations were that as well as streamlining and paying attention to sequencing of the learning competencies, that there was also um, some clarity around how those learning competencies are articulated and work together to build over time. I think that summarises um, our main recommendations. We'd be happy to take any questions that you have or provide any additional information that you need to start your hearing today. Thank you. Thank you for, for uh, the concise presentation. So basically, um, Dr. Robertson, the main takeaway here is Number one, there are too many competencies in our old curriculum. And uh, because it's too many competencies, our teachers are not teaching all of them. Or they do, or they do not finish. In one, in one school year, they are having problems finishing all the competencies. And that leads to number two, uh, our learners are not ready because they're not, all the competencies are not being taught to them. When they jump to the next grade level, they're not ready uh, to take on the subjects in the next grade level. And that also eats up into the time of the teacher in the next grade level. And that, uh, of course, that cascades now. The problem now cascades throughout the whole um, process. At the same time, um, Dr. Robertson, I also understand that the cognitive demands 
uh, is mismatched to the uh, learning. If, if I'm not, I'm, I'm not a te technical person no, on this matter, but I understand that the cognitive demands is mismatched to what the learners can absorb. Um, if, if that's the right, um, that's the right dis the, the description. And uh, can you elaborate on on that? on that uh, part, no? because that seems to be uh, a very important matter that we need to emphasize and an important reform that we need to also look at. Uh, certainly. Um, the cognitive demand issue is a very tricky one because you don't want a curriculum like the curriculum pre prior to the K-12 to where it's just rote learning and memorization. We know from lots of international studies that that doesn't prepare people well for their life. Um, it doesn't prepare them for higher education and it doesn't prepare them for the workforce. So we need to make sure that the curriculum has higher order skills in it. And the K-12 curriculum really made an improvement in that area. However, in some areas it went too far and it was really trying to get students to do things that were very cognitively demanding before they had cemented those earlier basic skills that they need. So you can't jump into the very high levels of analysis and evaluation and creativity if you don't have the fundamentals. So when we compared um, some, we, we had databases that allowed us to compare the Philippine curriculum to some international comparators. Uh, not a consistent um, database, but it was available in some of the learning areas. And where we did that, we found that the Philippine curriculum had a greater proportion of learning competencies that were at some of the high um, cognitive demand levels, but that it had very few, particularly in that sort of routine performance of standard algorithms. So if I give you a mathematics example, it would be that before students had had enough practice at just learning to do basic addition, they were being asked to do worded problems in a very um, applied and, and um, abstract situation where they needed to maybe draw on learning from different areas and pull, pull it together for some very elaborate problem solving. Now, it's very good that students get the opportunity to do that sort of problem solving, but they need to have enough practice in the basics in order to enable them to do that. And so we saw that the Philippine curriculum tended to be a little bit heavier on those very high skills and a little bit uh, lower on those sort of medium level skills. And so what we're asking, or what we were recommending in our report was that that be balanced a little more. So it was almost like the basic education um, prior to the K to 12 was too far in low cognitive demand and the K to 12 in some areas had swung a little bit too far to the other extent and it was too high. And what we need is just to come back a little so that they still get practice at the higher order skills, which are very important, but that they are taken there gradually and that the sequencing is developed properly. Is it right, uh, is it a correct description that um, the K-12 curriculum or the old curriculum um, did not, uh, did not uh, emphasize on the foundations uh, in terms of cognitive demand that it jumped too far ahead of the high level cognitive levels. Um, so in other words, the fundamentals and the foundations are quite weak uh, for his for 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 for, um, for our learners, that it went too far, and uh, that um, created um, weak foundations for our learners. Is that a, an accurate description, uh, Doctor Robertson? Yes, sir. That's um, a very accurate description. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator. May I add? Yes. Go ahead, Doctor Frido. Um. Maybe to give uh, everyone a view of what Dr. Pam was saying about uh, the cognitive demand, 
when we were reviewing the K-12 curriculum, we use five different levels of cognitive demand. And the lowest is that of, you know, memorizing facts and formulas and definitions. And then the second level is performing procedures. And then the third one is communicating understanding. And then the fourth one is analyzing information and advancing arguments and the highest level is applying concepts and making connections. Now the K-12 curriculum in general, although not in all uh, subject areas, focus on the fourth and the fifth one. That is analyzing information and applying concepts. And there was a uh, little time allotted to performing procedures. And as Dr. Pam uh, shared earlier, it was a reaction to the previous basic education curriculum or what is called BEC or RBIT. So that was how uh, the learning competencies were written and developed by the different groups of people who worked on the competencies. I'll, I'll just flash a, a slide, uh, and uh, this was taken from your research. Uh, yes, just sir. to illustrate, um, this was taken from the ACTRC research. And uh, just to show um, a visual representation of uh, what you have described um, here. For grade three, uh, what you were seeing Level four and level five is, is uh, level four is analyze and offer arguments. And number five, apply okay. concepts and make connections beyond area. Yeah. And uh, ACTRC compared it with Singapore. So yeah. in other words, in, in grade three, the yeah. higher level cognitive skills uh, for in the Philippines is much greater than, the, than Singapore. And uh, for the lower level, uh, Singapore is much lower. You know? So in other words, we're demanding more from our grade three students uh, beyond what, what they, can, uh, they, can, um, uh, they can absorb and also beyond the foundations that were given to them prior to grade three. So I, this is from the research that you have um, produced. And then it goes also, if you look at the, for grade six and grade 10, you can see the comparison. Uh, for grade 10, being, a, being, being more mature, uh, in Singapore, they have, you know, the level four and level five are much greater, but um, in the Philippines, it's the level five is much lesser. Um, so I think there's a mismatch within the cognitive demands and also what the learners are expected to uh, absorb. Is that an accurate description, Dr. Frido? Ma'am, you're on mute. Uh, I said that that is an accurate description of the cognitive demand that we have for the Philippine curriculum compared to Singapore. Thank you, thank you. Our minority leader has some questions. Uh, from the presentation, I get the impression that our learners, as they advance in age or in years, they also advance in grade level, although they may not be prepared for that new grade level. Is that what is happening, generally speaking? Uh, Pam, you can answer, but I can go ahead first. Yes, uh, Senator, that is true in general terms. That, that's why we say that the cognitive demand of our cur curriculum is high and focuses on what we have said on analyzing uh, information 
in advancing arguments in the highest level is on applying concepts and making connections. But if the prerequisite skills for this were gradually developed at the lower grades, then of course our students uh, would be able to, to handle. Although of course we need to consider that with respect also to the number of competencies in each grade level. Okay, ganun po yun. Okay, so uh, does our system pass students to the next grade level, although we know that they are not prepared for the subjects of that Next grade level. Uh, I'm happy to take that question if that's okay with you. The issue is not one of passing students who shouldn't be passed. The issue is of making sure that the system gradually builds students' skills in a sequential way. Uh, I'd like to refer back to some earlier research that Ma'am Marlene and I did in the science curriculum. And if we uh, look at that, even in the selective uh, science-oriented high schools, the pace of the curriculum was too great and the students couldn't keep up. It's not about the students not being good enough or not working hard enough or not being smart enough. It's simply that the task that they're being asked to do is too unmanageable. Uh, they can't even have a chance to present, uh, to, to sit in a classroom where the information is presented because the teachers don't have time to teach it all. So it's not a matter of passing students who shouldn't be passed. It's a matter of a system being established that is unachievable for both the teachers and the learners. Uh, I'm sure Ma'am Marlene would like to add to that. I think that's a sufficient explanation, yeah. Thank you for that uh, insight. No? So my next question is, our current curriculum, the uh, one before Matatag, when did we establish this? Uh, when did we start observing this or implementing this? Maybe the DepEd can also know. When and how did we come up with the uh, pre-Matatag uh, curriculum? Uh, good afternoon, um, Senator Wynne and Senator uh, Pimentel. Um, we started implementing uh, the K-12 curriculum in 2011 when we made mandatory uh, the implementation of kindergarten. And then it was a phased implementation also. Uh, there was a study conducted uh, by uh, the University of Melbourne, if I am not mistaken, uh, the findings of which were also uh, incorporated in the making and development of the K-12 program. But uh, we have our own curriculum committee, diba? So in the law, in the law, I said, Chairman, there's a law. There's a K-12 law, and I remember a particular section there, there's a curriculum committee. Is that committee functioning? Uh, what section is that? There is in the law. Deped, uh, you are not aware of a curriculum committee? Section what of the law? Yeah, section six of that law. There is a curriculum committee, okay, but of course we thank the University of uh, Melbourne and the Australian government for helping us, but yeah, the Curriculum Consultative Committee, Section 6 of RA uh, 10533. Uh, uh, I hope that is really activated, no? Because uh, yun ano, in changes in the curriculum, there must be really extensive uh, uh, consultation. So thank you for our Australian partners, but they have been there since the since the beginning of the present curriculum, which now which they now find to be either too ambitious, disconnected with reality, 
feet are not on the ground, ears are not on the ground, mga ganon. That is the same finding now of the... So what happened? What seems to have happened here, Mr. Chairman? Uh, University of Melbourne was already there for when the K-12 curriculum was uh, formalized or finalized. Oh, now, so now, we are in this situation now that we find that it's not in passing the learners, which is the problem, it's in the curriculum. So, uh, where did we make the mistake? Because we, are, we have already involved the University of Melbourne from the very start. Sana, sana ang pagkukulang natin. Um, Director Andaya, do, do you want to respond to that? Uh, uh, I can only answer for curriculum, uh, Senator uh, Pimentel. Uh, like like uh, what was uh, discussed by ACTRC, uh, there were some gaps that we saw in the paper itself. But it's another matter altogether in terms of implementing the curriculum, ensuring that the system... Uh, is in place in order to correctly and accurately implement uh, what's on paper. And so um, those were the findings, and uh, we're making sure that uh, this time around these findings are really incorporated in the Matatag curriculum. Mr. Chairman, so we have the K-12 curriculum, that was the pre-matatag, and then we have the matatag curriculum. Ang maganda siguro niyan is side-by-side side natin. Yan, talagang dapat makita natin. Side-by-side side natin. Dapat ganyan ang presentation siguro. So, sa length lang, which is the over-ambitious uh, curriculum, kung nasa left side si K-12, makikita natin sobrang haba yan. Dapat si matatag curriculum na nasa right column natin should be Visually shorter na. Yan ang dapat. Okay. And then, this time, siguro yung mga, when we put the headings on the subject matter, ano na, medyo, it, the, the subject matter title captures what is really to be taught in that. Kasi sabi, one of the present, one of the observations was the you know, clarity, lack of clarity. So, dapat ganun. So, are, are we ready with that, uh, Mr. Chairman? Ready na ba sila no? sa side-by-side -side presentation of the K-12 with the matatag? Basic na basic po yan. Uh, Senator, for today po, we weren't able to do that. It's just actually a discussion of the Matatag curriculum. But uh, if uh, the committee can give us time or uh, within the week, we can we can uh, send the juxtaposition of uh, the K-12 and the Matatag. Okay. Who gave the go signal for the Matatag curriculum to be uh, implemented on a pilot basis? Well, uh, ultimately, sir, it's the, the our secretary okay. that gave the go signal. So there must have been a group who, which presented to the secretary. Okay. What convinced the secretary that the Matatag curriculum is better than the K-12 curriculum? Um, sir, I, we are not privy to that, although our... our USEC for curriculum and teaching our boss, I believe presented this um, Tatag curriculum to the secretary. In fact, I, I, I just know that there were some changes that uh, uh, our good secretary also made, specifically as regards the peace competencies, peace education, because like she said, even in the launch of the curriculum, that, that it's something very close to her heart and other details which uh, we were able also to, to incorporate in the Matatag curriculum. Is the USEC present here? Wala rin? So, secretary is not present, USEC is not present. So, at any rate, tingnan nyo ah, present kayo ng Matatag curriculum, dumaan yan sa, I'm sure dumaan yan sa consultative committee, dumaan yan sa brainstorming ninyo. At the secretary level, she decides to add a competency. Additional yun eh. Peace, competency. Maganda sa tenga. But it adds a competency. So it goes against now observation number one. Too many learning competencies. So, kasi kung masyado kayong informal dyan, sa paggagawa ng curriculum, ganyan-ganyan lang, na naisip ko ngayon, dagdag nyo, is that the way you do it? Um... Sir, uh, let me somehow um, 
give clarity to the to the issue on the peace education she just said that there has to be as relate to us there has to be a focus also on peace education so it wasn't really adding uh, more competencies it's ensuring that those that are articulated in the curriculum are are clearly articulated also as peace competencies and in all learning areas so not necessarily adding more competencies it's just surfacing all of them and making sure that these are also articulated there and the idea came after you have presented the matata curriculum yes so balik balik kayo sa drawing board to fix the matata curriculum um Sorry, sir. It wasn't really a matter of fixing again, but ensuring that uh, all those uh, under peace competen uh, all those that fall under peace competencies are really surfaced in the curriculum. And so we looked at it with, without necessarily adding more competencies, but rephrasing it such that what are really the important peace competencies that should be included. And so we did some revisions there. On the uh, subject headings, Siguro, on the subject headings. The competency, sir. Yeah, the, which is, where is the competency, where is the competency found? Is it in the subject heading? Uh, ano ba tawag nyo doon? Ano ba tawag nyo doon sa, ma, sa mother We call them, uh, uh, sorry, Senator, we call them standards. And from standards. the standards, we break them down into content mm. uh, and then performance. Uh, so it's found in the content also, but at the same time in the competency. What, where is the competency found in the Matata curriculum? Expressed where? In the subject matter? Yes, yes. Content. Okay. So when you heard the peace competency, you revised your, no, at least your subject, subject matter title? Uh, Some of them, but uh, many are actually already present. Okay, so it's not adding a uh, competency, although you use the word uh, peace uh, competencies. Okay. So, okay, so Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll just uh, await the report on what has been happening on the ground sa pilot testing. Ilan ba to? How many, in how many, ano ba, schools bang approach natin? How many schools are, are we testing it? Good afternoon, um, sir. Uh, actually, we're piloting the Matata curriculum in 35 schools. These are found in seven regions pa. Since when? We started po last September 25. Po. Itong school year lang yeah, na ito. We started actually. Um, more or less, it's... Uh, okay, so it. the rest of the country, all the... The rest of the country, they follow the K-12 to uh, curriculum, then 35 schools, yes. the Matatag curriculum. Yes. Okay, so... Uh, how will we compare now the the, the results? How will we compare now after... After one uh, grading period, after one school year, when and how? We intend to look at it, uh, sir, after the end of the school year. Okay. Then we'll give them an exam? Yeah, and it's going to be the um, Bureau of Education Assessment that's going to undertake that, sir. So there will be Siguro 35, that's 35 schools with all the students will be given an exam. And then ang control, ang control natin would be some other selected schools na under the K-12, yes, and ma'am. then you will compare kung saan mas magaling in what? In, in math? Ano, ano ba yung, what will we measure? What will we compare? Math, reading, uh, math skills, Good. reading skills, ano ba? Science, science knowledge? Uh, actually, I, I cannot speak so much about uh, what's going to be tested, but certainly it's not going to be a comparison, particularly in the performance of our learners from that of the Matatag and that of the K-12. It will be a comparison? It's not going to be a comparison, certainly. So, ano kaya to? So, anyway, somebody explain, uh, well, somebody explain how the pilot testing will be put to good use. Sige, explain to us. Director Ndaya, I'm looking at your presentation. Um, uh, do you want to show uh, the minority leader there's a, a reduction in the number of competency? I think this is what uh, um, he's uh, pointing at. And also the breakdown of the, of the um, components of the peace education. It's in page 13 and page, um, what's this, uh, 16. Yeah. Sir? 
Let's fl uh, we'll flash it on the screen. This is from your presentation. Okay. Um, may I answer first? Uh, yes, and then uh, Senator Pimentel's uh, question. What's the purpose of the pilot implementation? It's not to uh, actually compare K to twelve and Matatag curriculum. The purpose of the pilot is now to determine the support needed by our teachers and school leaders to effectively implement the Matatag curriculum and to identify the challenges, issues, or gaps that may arise in order to address them appropriately and in the preparation for the implementation and rollout in 2024. So that uh, even from the get-go, we already know what are some of the problems and issues that we will encounter and we can actually do something about it before uh, it's uh, going to be implemented nationwide. So that's the purpose of the pilot. So in, effect, in effect, it has already been decided that the curriculum will now be changed. It's going to be the Matatag curriculum. Except that, I do not know, parang nag-renda nag, nag kayo. Uh, outside of the 35 schools, you will allow, you will let them suffer <laughs> learning from the old curriculum. Yan ang ginagawa nyo eh. Uh, because aralin nyo muna sa 35, ano bang problema ng in implementing the Matatag curriculum. Is that really necessary? Na may pilot? Sa 35, I mean, what's the point? Ano yun? Malalaman nyo naman sa nationwide, anong problem? If you implement it nationwide, what's, what's wrong? Senator, at least now, uh, with the results of the... Uh, okay, wait. Uh, in terms of looking into uh, the entire program, we want to make sure that uh, those, those uh, challenges that we were able to encounter in the implementation of K-12 Okay. we'll be able, uh, we drew lessons from that, but at the same time also drawing lessons for the pilot implementation because uh, it's not going to be assessed at the end only of the school year. So uh, there will be teams that will be looking into these schools and therefore they will not be uh, parang napabayaan or papabayaan namin in terms of implementing this, but ensuring that they have the necessary support so that this can be implemented also successfully. Yun po yung intent po ng pilot implementation. And besides, it's good also to take a look at uh, what works best in some areas and uh, what are the things that we need to improve on uh, because this is um, uh, a snapshot of, uh, for instance, those schools implementing in the far-flung areas and those implementing in the urban areas. Director, do you want to explain this slide? Because this is actually a very important slide, no? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, the findings of um, the, the ECTRC necessitated really looking into the most essential learning competencies. And that's why when we did the revision, we made sure, and this isn't just borne by the findings of ACRC in terms of uh, doing a documentary analysis, but it's really uh, doing FGDs or focus group discussions with our teachers and uh, even our supervisors. And this is an overwhelming uh, finding and that we needed to address. And that's why uh, we looked at the current curriculum, which is the K-12 curriculum, and we said that there are those that are nice to know competencies, nice to have competencies versus the must to know competencies. And so we were able to eliminate those and made sure that those that are essential in terms of uh, moving on to the next quarter, semester or grade level, those are what we placed here. And that's why from a total of 11,738, it became just 3,664 without um, uh, watering down uh, Senator Pimentel, what the competencies, what are the essential competencies that are needed by our learners, and so that the teachers are afforded more time to really uh, teach said competency.
<laughs> we're, we're talking on the sidelines of uh, with Senator Pimental. Actually, I share this same feeling, and I voiced this out in a few of my interviews that uh, this is long overdue. And uh, just imagine the competency, 70% reduction in competencies. And um, I'll, I'll show another slide that I picked up from ECTRC. Uh, and this is a very important slide. This is uh, slide two. This is from the research of Dr. Robertson and Dr. Frido. Um, this is, uh, yeah, so that uh, we'll have appreciation. Um, because of the over, um, the, because of the overcrowding and the, the and the number uh, number of competencies that we have in our old curriculum, just look at the number of teachers who can finish the entire competencies. No? Uh, in grade three, only twenty four percent. In grade uh, six, it's only twelve percent. Just imagine, only 12% of our teachers can finish the entire curriculum based on the competencies because of the sheer number of competencies that are pushed to them and mandated of them to teach. And uh, later on, we can hear from our teachers, we invited um, the, um, uh, the implementers to share with us their thoughts on the old and the new curriculum. Uh, earlier, uh, later on. And then in the ne next slide, again, I got this from ACTRC, because teachers are not teaching the entire curriculum, therefore their learners are not ready. Or they're not ready for the next level. And um, if you look at uh, uh, grade six, 59% are not ready. Uh, grade four, 20%, but it goes the, the higher the grade, the more not ready uh, the students are because the teachers are not teaching the entire number of competencies. And uh, that's why, in, in my opinion, my personal opinion, this is already an indication that we need to drastically change the curriculum and move fast. No? Uh, that's why, in my opinion, this, had been, this, this new curriculum should have been implemented yesterday. No? Um, but obviously, um, uh, I understand from DEPA there are some logistical and practical reasons why they have to do pilot testing. No? Um, and that's why we're on, on, on the sidelines, uh, me and Center Pimentel were saying that um, non-pilot schools, no? they'll be experiencing this, but the pilot schools, the 35, will, will obviously benefit from the new curriculum. But... Um, but let's add step ahead to explain to us the rationale why the delay of one year. I understand it's logistical, but let's let's hear from the ped why how come the there's a pilot school uh, implementation and then after that uh, a three year phased implementation. It's not a one year on a one year all level implementation, a three year phase implementation. So that's the rollout plan of uh, so give us a, a, a rationale on why that is um, that is the uh, decision to implement the new curriculum. Sir, we launched the curriculum in August of this year. It will take us um, months also to produce the necessary textbooks and learning resources. Uh, like I said, um, we were able to learn also from our experience in the implementation of K-12. And uh, one of those um, uh, challenges was actually ensuring that textbooks are, are given to our, are afforded our learners. And so uh, that gives us time as well to uh, do the necessary procurement activities so that by the beginning of uh, next school year, our learners have those resources. Number two, uh, we will have to train and retrain our teachers so that this is a new curriculum. Uh, there are capacity building activities that needed to be done. Uh, um, even, of course, uh, in terms of assessment activities. And so these are the uh, important considerations also 
in, in uh, implementing this for next school year. Do you have a budgetary estimate already on how much do we need to spend in order to prepare for the phase in implementation? Um, I'll flash on the screen uh, slide six, the phased implementation. Um, starting 2024 and, 20, and, then, and, and then four years thereafter, uh, there will be a, a phased in implementation. My first question is, how come it's kinder, grade one, grade four, grade three? Uh, what, uh, what is the reason behind the selection of these grades? And then number two, uh, what type of preparation and how much budget do we need in order to make sure that by 2024, all of these grade levels have the right learning materials, the right curriculum guides, and all of the training necessary to successfully implement the new curriculum? Okay. Um, sir, for the first question, uh, why is it a phased implementation? If uh, we take a look at the grade levels, we see that these are key stages. So key stage one is from uh, kinder to grade three, and then beginning of key stage two is four, beginning of key stage uh, three is seven, and beginning of key stage four is 11. And uh, as we looked at the skills that are necessary for them to be able to uh, master the needed competencies uh, and make sure that the prerequisites are able to be learned, then uh, they have to do a phased implementation. So that when, the, for instance, our grade uh, four students already reached the key stage standard, okay, because there are key stage standards that need to be met. And so uh, they already have the prerequisite necessary in order for them to move on to the next grade level. That's why uh, it has to be a phased implementation there because there are prerequisite skills. Now, in terms of preparation, uh, capacity building, this is, that has already been ironed out starting this school year. Uh, towards the tail end of this year, November, uh, there will be already capacity building activities for our teachers culminating in uh, summer. Uh, during which our teachers will be also capacitated, specifically those uh, kinder, grade one, grade four, grade seven teachers. In terms of procurement for the textbooks, I believe we have already started and uh, there has been a, a fund allotted for that purpose. Uh, and there are actually uh, activities also as regards uh, national assessments and classroom assessments that need also to be, uh, um, I mean, there, there are already plans in place for all of those. So we're looking at the entire system and making sure that the system will work and is working um, as, as, as well when we finally roll it out. So that by July of next year, ready na po lahat in time for our... So it, the 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 uh, reason for uh, uh, for picking this time frame is really for teacher training, uh, learning materials, uh, all the logistical requirements mm -hmm. that uh, we need to prepare for. And how much how much are you looking at? Uh, are we going to replace all the current uh, textbooks? Um, so if, if that's the case, we should be uh, we should be uh, preparing to, to to procure or to print yes. those textbooks already. Yes, but um, so if, sure. if we're talking about 2024, yeah. uh, that's around probably around when August. August, yes. So we're talking about a year less than a year from now. Yes, po. and we have already started with our pre-procurement activities. Okay. By January, I believe there's already a procurement that will happen for our textbooks. It explains what I noticed to be the tenfold increase in the budget for printing for uh, books and materials. One billion, if I remember correctly, one billion, and then sa next sa, sa nep, ten billion yata na laman yan, eh. Is that the reason why um, uh, there's an increase in 
uh, acquisition of books. Uh, this is in preparation for the new curriculum. Okay, all right. And how, one grade level on the average is what? Two, three million students, more or less. So we're talking about, we're talking about uh, for 2024, 12, more or less, uh, 10 to 12 million new books. Senator Wynn, um, our current textbooks will serve as our reference materials or the reference materials also of our teachers because not all competencies naman are new because there are enduring competencies, of course. And that's why uh, the textbooks, the current textbooks that we're using now might also be used, but not in the way that it has been articulated in the curriculum. So it's now up to the teacher if he or she will use that as long as it's available and, uh, in the uh, school. And at the same time, also other resources in the internet that they might find useful. We also have resources in our uh, portal that the teachers can make use of. Do you want to proceed with your presentation? I know you prepared the presentation. Is that is that correct? Yeah, yeah, because uh, that will uh, uh, give us more uh, information on uh, what changes you made and what is the rationale for the changing curriculum. Edi uh, Carol, you wanna you wanna say something? I guess, Senator Wynn, we have other comments on the revised K-10 curriculum, but we just wanted to reiterate our questions earlier shared with DepEd in relation to the textbooks. In our conversations with DepEd, in our ongoing partnership with them, the explanation to us is that for the production of textbooks, you need six months to produce it, three months to print it, and three months to deliver it, to ship. This is optimistic. Kung nasa pre-procurement tayo, it means once awarded, then you begin the six months, and then the three months, and then the three months. Using those timelines, we will not have textbooks by July. And so I guess yung question namin before is, and the response from DepEd before, was that may self-learning modules naman or may ibang materials. And so our, ask, our question is, do we have budget? to make those materials available, printed? Or are we going to release it digitally and then re request and rely on the teachers to handle the printing? Um, in our analysis also of the material of the information submitted to us by the DepEd Bureau of Learning Resources as of, as of August 2023, yung may textbooks lang talaga to fall back on in the current curriculum of K-12 to is really yung kompleto, grade 5 and grade 6, and a sprinkling of some subjects in grade 4, 8, 9, and 10. So I guess our real question is, we welcome, of course, the revision of the curriculum to make sure it is decongested. But in our consultations with teachers, sabi nila, please let's not start kung wala kaming training at wala kaming gamit at walang gamit yung mga bata. And so our question really is, how do we make sure that happens? We have a runway of one year, this pilot. We've asked the question before on what are the milestones that we are looking at to assess preparedness because you will need to make decisions before July that will then trigger the full implementation of K147. What are the milestones we are looking at? Ano yung binabantayan natin? Ano yung indicator na handa tayo? At ano yung indicator na hindi? At sa usapin pa lamang ng textbooks na malinaw na, na hindi sapat at hindi in time darating yan sa mga bata, ano yung plan B natin? Kasi ngayon pa lang, malinaw na, plan B will be our plan A. And is that reflected in the 2024 ga? We'll, we'll uh, drill down on the textbooks later on. No? That's an important point because, um, of course, uh, it's very difficult to learn and to, to teach without any textbooks. No? So, uh, and what our minority leader pointed out, we already allocated funds. No? So, uh, the next question is, can we spend it and deliver it on time? No? Uh, on time for the... Uh, school opening in 2024. So we'll drill down on that later on, but we'll allow uh, DepEd to present the Matatag curriculum and uh, so that we can also um, uh, make some comments on um, this uh, curriculum. Okay. You can go ahead, uh, Director Andaya. Thank you, sir. Um RA, sorry, next slide, please. When we 
adopted the K-12 program via R8 and 53.3. Our aim was to enhance the Philippine basic education system by strengthening the curriculum and increasing the number of years of basic education from 10 years to 12 years. Prior to the implementation of K-12, the Philippines had been one of only three remaining countries in the world, the other two being uh, Djibouti and Angola, 12, 10 years of basic education. The phased implementation of K-12 was adopted starting in 2011-2012 and was progressively implemented in the succeeding years. In 2017-2018, our grade 6 and 12 learners became the first cohort of elementary and uh, senior high graduates. Uh, this is school year 23-24. We will have our first batch of graduates who will have fully uh, gone through the entire gamut of the K-12 program. Uh, next slide, please. And so after several years of implementing the uh, curriculum, it is now uh, for revision. And uh, like what ACTRC mentioned, uh, these were the findings of... of um, when they did the review, it's congested, there's misplaced prerequisite learning competencies, and there's an imbalance of um, cognitive demand. And so next slide, please. This is how we went through the curriculum revision process. Yeah, it took us about two years to uh, revise the curriculum from the development of shaping papers and curriculum guides and validation of these documents to revision and public review and eventually finalization of these step documents. Uh, the public review is something new that the VP and secretary introduced, Paul, because this is the first time that we did that. We opened it up to the public for their comments and suggestions. And... Um, we share this uh, in our website, and uh, I believe that many of our stakeholders were able to uh, comment on the curriculum. Um, we have also listened, next slide, to uh, uh, several voices and perspectives, and we showed our commitment to engage our stakeholders in making decisions crucial to the future of every Filipino learners we have engaged a sizable number of collaborators and contributors, not just from the DepEd, but also from the academe and higher education institutions uh, and other sta external stakeholders and industry leaders. We have also engaged the biggest private school associations such as Cocopea, uh, CEAP, AXCU, PAC and even our international experts. And then uh, next slide. After going through the revision process, uh, we have subjected uh, to the curriculum to a public review, uh, and there were around 4,483 respondents. Uh, even EDCOM to, was able to um, uh, submit their feedback, uh, share their feedback with us. And uh, there were many, of course, there were some revisions that we made because of the feedback coming from several institutions and organizations. Our revision was guided by several factors, which are found in the next slide, uh, including the insights gleaned from the curriculum review findings, the international uh, large-scale assessment results, and international uh, benchmarks such as Singapore, US, Australia, and alignment with the overarching goals outlined in the Matatag education agenda. And all, we also, in the revision, we also follow the, the, some basic learning principles. Number one, learning is not possible in an overcrowded curriculum. Uh, it can be a stressor to students and teachers and even serve as an impediment to learning. Number two, learning competencies must be age appropriate. When adults expect young children to master skills for which the necessary maturity has not yet been formed, we are impairing healthy brain development by excessively stressing the child. If pushed and rushed, a child's desire to learn will be hampered and his or her learning spirit crippled. The third learning principle is that learning starts from what students already know and can do. And that is one of the things that our partners, the ACTRC, mentioned, that some of the students are not prepared to uh, tackle a new competency or skill. 
And then the last principle is learning involves a progression where more complex skills are built on foundational skills. And so much learning tends to follow unexpected path or progression where more complex skills are built on foundational skills. Uh, next slide, please. And so the main features, next slide, are of the Matatag curriculum are the following. Number one, there's a focus on foundational skills such as literacy and numeracy skills, especially in K-3. Number two, it's a decongested curriculum. We have significantly reduced the number of learning competencies, a balance of cognitive demand. Uh, as the uh, student progresses to the next grade level, there's a shift from the focus on low levels to higher order thinking skills. And then clear articulation of 21st century skills, such as information, media, and technology skills, learning innovation skills, communication skills, and life and career skills. And then reduced learning areas for key stage one from grades one to three, and intensified values education and strengthened peace education. There's an intensification of values formation of learners through GMRC and values education in adherence to RA 11476 and integration of peace concepts in the curriculum. And uh, we made sure that our curriculum is on a par with uh, international standards. Next slide. So uh, for the congestion of the curriculum, which necessi necessitated streamlining its intent and content, uh, for grade one, from seven learning areas, uh, it's now only five learning areas that focus on strengthening literacy and numeracy. So from seven, po, it's already five because we want to make sure that the foundational skills are attained by our learners. And so... Um, the creation of a language curriculum, curriculum gives more emphasis to the development of oral language skills for communication in the learner's first language, which is essential in developing foundational skills for literacy and learning and other content areas. Reading and literacy equips learners with strong foundation in reading skills, comprehension, and critical thinking, and concurrently fosters a love for reading and helps learners develop the necessary skills to become confident and proficient leaders. readers. And math remains to be a significant part of the Matatag curriculum. Uh, we also introduced the new learning area called Makabansa that seamlessly weaves vital content and skills from civics, arts, and culture history and physical education and health. And then uh, the fifth uh, curriculum content, I mean, um, the fifth subject, which is GMRC or good manners and right conduct, uh, puts more emphasis in a, on uh, engaging various relational dynamics in a changing world and to ensure inclusivity uh, amongst our learners. Uh, in sum, we reduce the learning areas with only five for grades one and two and six for grade three. Next slide, please. So, I'm sorry. Uh, just to just to uh, put everyone on the same. The, this is uh, the first slide. This is for grade one, correct? Yes, for, grades one and two, sorry. For grade, for key stage one. Uh, for for grade three, which is part of key stage one, there's an additional subject, which is science. Uh -oh. So uh -oh. science starts in grade three. And just to just to educate us, uh, for example, in the for grade one mathematics, how many competencies are there? Just just give us a uh, uh, in the current and in the new. Here's some uh, Sorry. It's Uh, it's in the other, the, there, there's a slide, the congested curriculum. It's there, Paul. Yeah. Uh, per grade level, we have for per grade level. This is the have. competencies for the entire. entire. Uh, so, for example, mathematics, that's divided into uh, different grade levels. Yes, yeah, six right? grade levels. Six grade levels. So, the 740. Is divided by it's divided uh, it, it's spread across six grade levels. Correct. So that's uh, just to give everyone yes uh, an idea on how competencies are mm -hmm. are distributed. 
But it really depends also on the grade level, correct? Yes. Yeah. It's not, it's not uh, evenly, distributed. evenly distributed across grade levels. So you, uh, slide number 11 po natin is uh, grade 1. Yung ipakipokus po yung yan. That's for grade 1. Grades 1 and 2, uh, uh, grade, sir. Grades 1 and 2. Pero it's, it's in the details. Eh. Sabi ko ka chairman namin, so that's, those are the mother categories. We have reduced them from 7 to 5, but we may just have transferred the components. So for example, sige, in the current curriculum mathematics for grades 1 and 2, what are the competencies that we are trying to teach our learners? Sige, in the current curriculum mathematics. Uh, basic way to learning from, uh, for instance, in grade one, uh, they're able to count from one to 100, if I am not mistaken, because... Uh, Kasi ma'am, ganito eh. Sa isang slide ninyo, sa current curriculum ninyo, ang competencies na mathematics, 740. Sinabi nyo, oh, spread over how many grade levels yan? Seven or six? Six, eh, divide natin, the 120, more or less, competencies. Ang gusto nyo ituro sa isang grade level? Is that is that the correct way of, of, of looking at it? Uh, the, the average number of competencies in the new curriculum is between 90 to 120, if I am not mistaken, yes. In the new, in, in the, the matatag? New, in the matatag, opo. For one grade level? For one grade level. Okay, can we take a look at that one? Ano yung 90 to 100 na yun? Uh, and then, sa, sa old curriculum, ilan? More, more or less. We have a distribution per grade level. So yes. that's my visualize. Ma visualize okay. Para lang, nagsasampling din po tayo just to test the the theory behind this uh, decongested uh, curriculum. Opo. For instance po, uh, if we talk about competency, uh, in grade one, for instance, um Dapat alam na nila yung addition of numbers with, which sums up to 100. Yan po yung tinuturo. And That's then, how we describe the competency. Yes. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. So grade 1 students must be able to add how many how yeah. many, how many addends yung two numbers up to 100. Oh. Two, uh, okay. Must be able to add two numbers um, up to 100. Isa yan, ganyan yung yes. pagsukat. Uh, okay, okay. Okay. That's how we approach and then it. They, uh -huh. uh, other, another competency is to measure the length of an object. And uh, the distance between two objects. Mm. Yeah. So, naka, so, naka 120 dis descriptors kayo dyan. That's, the, uh, that's under the... Matatag. Math. Uh, yeah, math. Yeah, math matatag. grade 1, matatag. In the K-12, to um, math grade 1, um, many. Um, Sa tingin ko, dapat parehas lang yan. I don't think ginalaw niyo yan. Sa iba tayo, titingin siguro, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, mas... Just like, ah, ginalaw nga pala nila kasi para makita natin yung ano, difference. Opo. Ano lang po, uh, although I do not have the figures right now in PowerPoint presentation and in the uh, uh, tawag dito, in, in the documents I have, the decongestion did not just mean deleting some of the competencies because uh, in the K-12 curriculum, there are competencies that overlap, that are repetitive, and so those were also some of the reasons why uh, from, let's say, for instance, 250 competencies in a particular grade level, it became 90. It wasn't just that, um, tawag dito, uh, we just deleted those that are nice to know, but that uh, repetitions push and overlaps. And that's why when we looked at the, not just the math curriculum actually, but the entire curriculum, uh we said that ah of course in for instance science we cannot do this particular competency unless it's found in the math uh i mean it's tackled in math and so there was some sort of an horizontal across grade across subject areas and vertical articulation that needed to be uh, done as well so that we'll be able to know what's really the essential so ganun po yung explanation sir as to why uh, we were able to it's not just a hodgepodge of 
parang, o oh, sige, ilagay natin yan, isiksik natin. It's not possible po because, like I said, we just wanted the essential competencies. So every competency that we placed there, we made sure that it's really what's needed by our learners. And there are criteria that we follow in order to say that it is an essential competency. So mag maganda na yun. I think I, I appreciate this halos uh, 8,000 uh, competencies ang naalis. But uh, why did this happen in the first place? Yun ang gusto ko tanawin. Why yung overlapping? For example, uh, how sure are we that wala rin overlapping dito sa 3,600 na iwan? Oh, what, what level of care did you now implement which was not observed uh, in the past? Um, I do not. Um, I apologize, Mr. Senator, but I would not wish to dwell on uh, what happened in the making or development of the K-12, but this I can assure you, Paul, as the Director of the Bureau of Curriculum Development, that the process that we observed, it took us two years, actually, to do this, the revision itself. The review took us one year and a half to do it, but for the revision, we made sure that... Uh, uh, there are no overlaps and that uh, they are not repetitive. Why am I saying that uh, I am sure about it? It's because we did something that we did not do before, which is uh, we uh, nilatag namin yung buo, hindi lang math for instance, uh, kundi lahat ng learning area, subjects, nilatag po namin niya, tinitingnan po bawat isa, this is the competency here. Can we place it? Uh, is this a prerequisite to another competency in another subject or learning area? That's what we did po. Uh, so the level of care that we placed there was very important as well to us. And so we had to go back to the drawing board if there were some uh, uh, if the cognitive demand is high in a particular level and say, uh, okay, hindi niya kaya yan kasi hindi pa niya, nat hindi pa niya naturo dito. And uh, to our surprise, Mr. Senator, uh, we found out that there are some competencies, for instance, in grade 7 that uh, were supposed to be taught already in grade 6 or grade 5 but weren't taught. And so we had to go back to that and say, oh, dito muna, bago natin lagay. So in terms of level of care, I am very confident about uh, how we did uh, that, that uh, validation of the competencies. Uh, this will not be your last hearing on this, right? In the next hearing, siguro, let us test the, the matatag curriculum by really now scrutinizing magkuha tayo isang subject dyan. Tignan natin. Maybe even the science kasi science did not uh, compress. Eh. It actually expanded. No? Tignan natin anong, anong ginawa nila dyan. Sige. Siguro in the... Uh, you uh, yun na, yung, gusto ko yung mga description eh, on, on what is that competency that you expect. Uh, you expect that of the of the graduate of that level. No? So at the end of the school year, that person, that learner must know how to. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, hanggang 120. Yes, sir. Okay, so. Opo. And then at a certain key stage, for instance, if they finish grade three, these are the standards that uh, they have met already. How many days in a school year? Uh, for, for this school year, it's 100. In a normal school year, in an expected school year. Like. One, 188 to 200. 188, and then we, we we attempt to teach them 120 competencies yeah. in 180 days. So, mm -hmm. siguro it take into account din natin yan, Mr. Chairman, kasi hindi lang naman yung pahapyaw eh, dapat uh, may, may drills, may drills din dapat. Well, but this is very interesting, so I'm glad I attended this uh, hearing, Mr. Chairman, at may nakikita tayong... And congratulations, I think uh, it, it took that to, to cut down 11,700 to 3,600. I mean, medyo, siyempre, meron din kayong pagdududa noon, ano, na kung sa tanggalin natin ito, baka, ano. But, so let's test it. We have to test it. Kami, outsider, outsiders must, must, must test it para uh, objective po kami. May we, have I say remind, we have to remind everyone that the minority leader is a mathematics major. Yeah. Aside from being a bar top notcher, no? kaya paghihimay, hihimayin niya talaga yan. But I, 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 the minority leader made a good point to help us understand no? um, uh, what 
was the process in order to reach this new 3,664 competencies and how uh, the process that you undertook has now become more cohesive. No? Because I understand earlier that the subjects were in silos. No? I, that's what I understand. Uh, loosely. loosely. But now, because nilatag na, it's more cohesive and it will build on each other. So, in a layman, we're not we're not educators, no? but in a layman, in next hearing, just demonstrate to us how demonstrate us that cohesiveness in terms of subject, no? so that uh, we will truly appreciate uh, the reforms under the Matatag curriculum. We'll, we'll call on Dr. Frida first before we go back to Director Joyce. Uh, yes, thank you, Senator. Uh, because we are talking about the learning competencies, I had the opportunity towards the end of the revisions being done, done by the Bureau to sit together with the science specialist, because I'm a science uh, major, uh, for three weeks. Uh, not, not really to write, but you know, to give some, some suggestions together with other Australian consultants. And the way that was done was that it was not simply reducing the number of learning competencies, but it was also focusing on the preciseness of the language of the learning competency. And as has been said, nilatag kagaya din ng iba, like science vis-a-vis -vis math, uh, it was also made sure that the exact position in the learning continuum was uh, considered. Also, another consideration that I observed was that the learning competencies had a good balance of uh, knowledge and understanding, that's content, skills, and also values and attitudes, plus um, examples of applications such that students will function as you know, good citizens of the country and of the world. So that was how uh, that was the lens through which the learning competencies uh, were uh, revised. Now, Senator Pimentel said that science had in, an increase because in the previous K to twelve curriculum, teachers also had difficulty unpacking. Uh, some learning competencies that were stated uh, in such a way that they had to or they have to determine ah, what are the prerequisite skills that are really needed here. So they have to go, you know, uh, so many way, grade levels way back. So those are some of the considerations done by the science team. I am not privy to the other uh, learning areas. So I hope that that uh, helps. Okay, thank you. With the uh, permission of Senator Pimentel for the next hearing, we'll request uh, DepEd to demonstrate to us the cohesiveness of the subject on mathematics and science. We'll just choose those two uh, subjects so that uh, we'll understand how one grade levels subject and competencies uh, is cohesively related to the next grade level and so on. No? Uh, I think that's what uh, Dr. Frido mentioned uh, earlier, especially on science. I, I, and now I appreciate that uh, science is further unpacked. No? That's why the competencies uh, expanded. But let's test it so that we will truly appreciate the new curriculum. So continue the director... Uh, uh, Andaya, you're on uh, the Makabansa. And this, this Makabansa, I understand, is a new subject. Yeah. We can, we can continue with that. Um, yeah, we'll be happy to uh, do that uh, presentation uh, in the next hearing, for uh, Senator. And then uh, to continue, for Makabansa, which is a new subject, um, layunin ito na mapaunlad uh, ng mga mag-aaralang pag-unawa sa sarili at kultural na kamalayan 
kasanayan upang maging malusog at malikhain at may kakayang makipag-ugnayan sa kapwa at pamayanan. This connects and uh, reinforces grades 4 to 10. Uh, Arlim Panlipunan as learners examine and understand nationalism in the context of the national narratives, Southeast Asia context, and global dynamics and processes in Araling Panlipunan. Uh, next slide. Uh, we, as mentioned several times already, we have decongested the curriculum by 70%, which supports our assertion and focus on the essential skills of literacy and numeracy. Uh, next slide. We also focus as one of the features of the Matatag curriculum, uh, 21st century skills, uh, with specific examples that manifest in various learning areas. So we recognize, recognize the importance of reinforcing the 21st century skills of our Filipino learners, aiming to equip them beyond just the traditional learning comp domains. Uh, the focus is on developing competencies that are vital in today's digital and global world. And so these include digital literacy, uh, critical thinking and problem solving, future orientation and thinking, and resilience and adversity management. We want to ensure that our learners are not only knowledgeable, but also adaptable, forward thinking, resilient, and well equipped for the 21st century. Next slide. We have the values education. Uh, actually, this is uh, Gem RC and values education. Uh, the main author uh, of this law is, of course, Senator Wynn. Uh, we wanted to inculcate the right values across all levels from kindergarten to grade 10. We have done this by introducing GMRC in kinder to grade 6 and values education in grade 7 to 10. Uh, the focus here is on nurturing the learners' essential socio-emotional skills such as empathy and resilience, contributing to their emotional well-being and interpersonal relationships, and ultimately building a strong character. And the next slide is... Uh, another feature, which is on peace education. Okay, so uh, it is a strengthened peace education in the curriculum where learners are provided with a set of values, attitudes, and ways of life that stand against violence and prevent con conflicts by tackling their root causes to solve problems through principal dialogue and negotiation among individuals, groups, and nations. And then, next slide. Uh, these are our plans. Pilot implementation is ongoing. And then we are starting with capacity building by uh, November. And then uh, the first quarter of next school year culminating in the capacity building of our teachers. It's not just the teachers that we are capacitating, but also school heads. They need to understand the changes that are being made in the curriculum. At the same time, our supervisors will be able to provide the technical assistance to the schools and learning resources. Uh, we are also revising the senior high school. In fact, we've had we've made several consultations already with academia, with different sectors and uh, industries, so that uh, these inputs will be included in the review of the curriculum and eventually the revision of the curriculum. And we have engaged several stakeholders in this endeavor. Next slide. So, uh, as already discussed, uh, there's a phased implementation of the Matatag curriculum uh, starting in school year 2024-2025 and ending in 2027-2028 for grade 10. This does not, of course, include uh, the senior high school uh, uh, phased implementation also. Next slide, please. Okay, so overall, uh, we want our learners to be prepared with strong literacy and numeracy foundation, uh, equipped with 21st century skills. They're nationalistic and global, and they are ready to succeed in life. Uh, Senator Wynn, I believe that this is the last uh, slide of our my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We can uh, move on to, uh, we've invited some uh, pilot schools here to share with us their um, 
experiences on the uh, pilot uh, implementation with us are uh, members of the uh, Malabon City. Malabon City uh, Elementary School, Kapit Bahay Namin, Valenzuela. So uh, we're here uh, joined by Dr. Cecil Carandang. So, ma'am, you can uh, share with us uh, your thoughts on the new curriculum. What are your suggestions? What are the uh, uh, challenges that you face so far? I, I know we're only what two months, two months, pa lang, no? Into the four, four weeks, pa. Less than a month, no? So it's probably too early. But uh, just initial thoughts, lang, no? on, on the implementation. You're a professional teacher. Your your group is a professional. Are, are composed of professional educators. So I'm sure you have a feel already of this new curriculum. And just share with us and some suggestions that we can uh, we can take into consideration so that we can improve and make this successful. Honorable Chair, uh, Senator Vinga Chalian, a blessed afternoon and all of us gathered here. First, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the invitation given to us to be present here in our uh, Senate uh, hearing for the Matatag curriculum. Uh, we can say that we had been very blessed to be chosen as the pilot implementor. Uh, ito po ay napakalaking challenge, pero tinitina namin ito sa napakalaking blessings. Dahil sabi nga po ni na Director Andaya, na ang anumang lessons na makikita during the pilot implementation ay malaki ang may tutulong sa full implementation nito by next year. Sa Malabon po, we are the lone pilot implementor division. We have five schools. And among... Uh, those schools during the collaborative expertise we have during Fridays, nakita po namin na mas iba ang approach at mas matatag talaga ang mangyayari sa matatag curriculum. Kung comparison po yung pag-uusapan pagdating sa K-12 or from the other uh, curriculum before, ang maganda po kasi ngayon sa matatag curriculum we have the collaborative expertise. Natutunan namin yon during the National Learning Camp introduced by DepEd na dati ang mga guro, bibigyan sila ng competency, magpiprepare sila ng lesson plans, and uh, lahat ng mga gagawing activity sheets, sila yung gagawa noon. But this time, uh, for the DepEd, provided po ito ng DepEd Central Office. So meron ng lesson exemplar, merong training sa ibinigay sa mga teachers, at ang maganda doon, nagkakaroon ng collaborative expertise na bago ituro yung lesson for the next week and not yung previous week, nagkaroon ng pag-uusap yung mga guro ng halimbawa, lahat ng grade 1 teachers. So yung pag-aaralan pa lang next week, pinag-uusapan na nila. So, nakakaroon na sila ng feedbacking dahil nabigyan na sila ng lesson exemplar ng mga activity sheets, mas nagiging madali. Sa halip na yung isang teacher, siya na ang bahala sa lahat ng pagtuturo niya. Ngayon, nagiging collaborative, nagtutulong-tulong na sila. So, kung ano nangyari nung last week, ano yung naging problema, pinag-uusapan nila yon Kung may mga lessons or may mga activity sheets na hindi natapos, paano ang gagawin nilang approach? At ang maganda rin po noon, yung lahat ng kung ano ang naging best practice ng isang teacher or ng iba pang teachers na highlight yon during the collaborative expertise. At hindi lang po yun yung napakagandang feature ng matatag curriculum. Yung presence ng technical assistance, yung napakalaking suporta ng pinibigay ng division office, ng regional office, and even the central office during the collaborative expertise. Ika nga po, uh, suportado ang teacher sa kanilang pagtuturo. So, nagiging matatag yung bata sa pagkuha uh, niya ng lahat ng mga competencies dahil yung teacher muna na supportahan. Kapag ang teacher ay uh, confident enough to teach the subject, nabanggit siya kanina po during the discussion, mas malaking bagay na lahat ng competency may tuturo niya talaga sa bata. At yung for the week na dati-rati, may mga hindi talaga natatapos. Ngayon, dahil sa collaborative expertise, they will make sure yung competency for the week ay talagang ma makukumpleto. So, yun po yung isang napagandang feature noon. At ang maganda rin po dito, yung mga resources provided. Present naman po yung mga dating mga libro at yung mga learning mga modules, mga video lessons. So, nagagamit pa rin po yun ng teacher. At kung sakaling may disruption of classes, ah, uh, 
malaking bagay yung collaborative expertise. So, ano yung araw na mawawala ng pasok because of the some typhoons or other uh, mga pagay ng strikes. So, malaking tulong po na may kasuporta ang buro sa pagtuturo, kaya mas confident at mahusay niyang naibibigay yung lahat ng lessons sa dapat na matutunan ng bata. That's all po. And we have also with us our uh, district supervisor and at the same time our OIC principal of Muson Elementary School together with the SDO, SDO team of Malabon. We have our ASDS and our CID chief and our supervisors also. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, just a few questions no, to um, anyone who can answer. Uh, yung, I think we'll, we'll, I'll go to the basics no, because yung accusation or 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 uh, analysis uh, in the past is congested in curriculum. And then the teachers uh, don't have ample time to teach all the competencies. No? So ngayon, dinikongest na siya by 70%. So what's the experience of our teachers? No? Uh, anong kanilang on the ground? Kasi the teachers, sila yung nagtuturo eh. No? So sila yung mas nakaka-experience nung hirap o ginhawa. So, from from that point of view, uh, anong experience ngayon ng ating mga teachers in this new curriculum? Uh, good afternoon po, uh, Your Honor and Senator Pimentel. Base po sa encounter ko with the teachers because uh, it's a collaborative po naman. At the beginning po, there's a certain adjustment because on the two weeks na transitional po yung ating teachers and the same time ng estudyante, uh, we had before a orientation among the parents just to know that there are some changes po sa schedule. So after being informed, then we proceed po dun sa transitional. This transitional stage po ay ihanda po namin yung mga estudyante sa sinasabi nating matatag curriculum. Now, we're on the fourth week po. Ang nangyayari po uh, daily as a function as a school head po right now, I um, involve myself directly po. Kinakausap ko yung kinder uh, oh, I have three teachers in kinder and in grade one. I uh, two rather in kinder than in grade one po tatlo and grade four tatlo. So based on the school, on the five schools that Malabon have, akin po yung pinaka smallest po. So what happens that I uh, I was able I was able to meet them daily. So ano po ba basic problems that they encountered? Surely the adjustment po, the time because they have to make a certain adjustment since uh, nag-extend po konti yung ating grade 4. Then, uh, because of that, uh, nasa, na ano naman po, natugunan. But when look into the yung sinasabi po nating loading, they more appreciate po ang mga teachers kasi they're able to uh, able to teach well the uh, around one to two competency per week. And I also ask the, the feedback coming from the teachers Okay, bas mga estudyante. Um, medyo ang ano lang po is because of the sinasabi po nating pilot, so yung mga worksheets po are being tested for the students. So, minsan po ang nakikita, uh, medyo marami. So, sabi ko, bakit marami? Uh, because this is the prescribed, we're going to test these uh, worksheets. So, sabi ko, anong ginagawa niyo? So, they uh, tell me, told me na, uh, they're going to extend it. So, okay naman ba to sa mga bata? Sabi naman, okay naman po. So, they're able to uh, render this kind of ano po, yung mga activities that the student will end up mastering the subject matter po. Yan po. Uh, paano ba ito nagka-function? Kunyari, uh, sa grade level, merong grade 1 mathematics, let's say 120 competencies. Ano yun, naka, parang isi-checklist ninyo yan, that before the school year ends, dapat na ituro na ninyo at dapat na itest ninyo na alam na nila. And then pag sinabi kong nila, it cannot be 100%, but what percentage of nila? So yeah, ito, yung mga, ito yung mga realities on the ground. Meron may, may, po tinatawag po ng budget of work naka allotted po per quarter. So with the coordination po with the education supervisor po, every week it will be monitored po. 
So from the activities, uh, a lesser ex exemplar being given by the central office po, and it will go to the regional, it will pass to the division office po. And that's the time po, every Friday, uh, we have the collaborative po. So they talk about the lessons and the activity sheets, then uh, what transpired during the week, they collaborate po. There are some shortcomings, the, uh, the supervisor and also the among the teachers themselves give some uh, exchange ideas po kung ano ba naging problema. Yeah, okay, yan, yan yung mga ginagawa ninyo. Pero on, on the curriculum side nga, basta ganun na uh, at a certain grade level for math, 120 competencies, you make sure that in the 180 to 200 days of school year, maituro ninyo yan. Okay, yes, po. okay. But what, is it only maituro or dapat pumasok sa pokote? nung learners ninyo. Mastery. Uh, how do we measure that? And then, I'm sure it cannot be 100% mastered by the entire class. Well, what percentage will make us happy? Kasi may mer meron po a daily, meron sila formative that we give uh, uh, feedback in daily encounter. Panturo po si teachers and also will be reflected on their activity sheets. Hmm. If the teacher will give these activity sheets po, so makikita na yung teacher kung meron ng uh, gain knowledge, skills, and attitude. So, by then po, merong immediately feedback. Uh, this uh, formative assessment naman po, recorded, but not graded. So, after that series po, ayon sa deputy order this coming October 26-27, we'll be holding our first quarter po, periodic test. Yun and po. how large is the class size? Uh, for me, it's a small school po. Uh, it's very ideal po, parang private and the thing. So we ilan are, na, ilan, example lang. For example po, uh, 40, 40? No po, sir. Mababal. Uh, because okay. uh, meron pong ma ma minimum and maximum. So kinder will be 25, correct me if I'm wrong po. So, yeah. 25 to 30. Mm. So roughly kasi we have a problem mm. sa enrollment kasi yung our school is quite uh, small rin po and parang isolated siya. Mm. So roughly we're around 24. Okay, hindi so medyo hindi to representative of the what's in the usual class ganyan in a city, si city na lang example at city. 50 students to class. 45 to 50. Oh, sige na na lang natin. Okay. So you teach you teach your subject. Okay, you assess your students. Yes po. What percentage will make the teacher happy that he has successfully taught his his or her students? So 50 students na yon, ano percentage? I think, sabi nga po, it's not the pagpapasa, but how the student able to inculcate po yung learning. So it's a matter of... Like, sinusukat dapat oh, yan. Yes, dapat oh, may sukat yan. Yes, Kaya oh. tanong ko, pa paano sinukat? Let's say assessment, graded yes, or not yes, graded. Po. Wala na ko pag alam kung graded or not graded, but Roughly, it's I am sure it's not 100% yes, na all of your students master the 120 competencies. Impossible yun. Okay. Maybe in your class, but not nationwide. Yes, okay. Anong... Goal ng DepEd, how, may, well, how much percentage must at least 75% 75 of your class must at least be competent in the 100 plus competencies that you teach in 180 days? Ganun. More or less, ganun. Yes, ganun. more or less ang usapan. Ganun. Okay. And you measure that yes, po. Okay. Uh, quarterly, Yan sabi mo, para makita yung progress. Yes, Tama? That is the that is DepEd, ano, that is DepEd standard, ha? You measure it quarterly. Okay. Then dito na pumasok yung bill ni Senator Wynn na those lagging behind, gusto niya may intervention yes, para na ma mahila na. And we have remedial point, classes po. Oh, and it's not, and you and you know that they're lagging behind not too late in the year, di ba? Because quarterly. Yes. Yan ang point. Okay. So I hope it, I hope the theory works in practice. Yan yes. lagging point. I mean, uh, Yes, uh, sir. Uh, those that are falling through the cracks early on are given, uh, in, especially during the fifth week of the quarter, we already know, uh, the, the teachers already know that they need to give intervention, remediate uh, in whatever form so that the student can be helped. And this does not just involve the teacher and student, it involves the family as well, so that the home can also participate in ensuring that the students are helped. It's in our DepEd order. And from... Nice theory, pero siyempre alam, alam niya na yun eh. Good in theory, but siyempre pinasa na nga sa inyo yung bata para turuan eh. Pero is the home uh, participation indispensable to the improvement of the child? 
Doon kayo dependent at kung magkapalpakan yun siya, do we have to turo natin yung home? Kaya dapat sa within the school nag improve na siya. Yes. Uh, uh, well, studies... If... How many hours does a student spend in school? Six hours at the least. So those six hours must not be wasted hours. Tama po. So even if it's not complemented by home study or home tutoring, na ba't nasusukat natin na improve yung bata sa six hours is a school? Yes po, uh, Mr. Jim. Sir, just of course to emphasize that uh, uh, there's something very positive with homeschool partnership. That's just what I'm trying to say. But uh, even with the... Uh, Without the support of the home, the school can still be successful given the right interventions and motivation. Or retain, retain that on the on the paper, on the theory. Retain yun yun. Pero dapat siempre you must we must succeed even if the home is uncooperative. Inang point ko. Pero in theory tama yan. Encourage the home to be involved. Kasi sabi alis niya. Pero dapat ganon na. I mean dapat ganon tayo. Six hours tama pinigay yung bata sa atin ni under our care. Uh, yes, ma'am. Good afternoon po, Senator Pimentel. Uh, napakita po kanina na decongest talaga. Kagaya po na sa grade 1, from 7 subjects, naging 5 sila. Dati yung 7 subjects, tinit, uh, lahat yun kinukuha ng bata sa, uh, sa 6 to 12 niya. Ngayon, kasama na po yung remedial instruction doon sa pagtigil ng bata na dati hindi. Kasi nga, full pack ng subjects yung bata. So sa halip na uuwi ang bata or mag extend si teacher ng remedial instructions ay may next batch na ng tuturuan. So, during the stay ng bata sa school, nagkakaroon na po ng remedial instructions. Meron din pong time talaga sa pagpapabasa. Yun talagang dapat na itututok ng teacher na hindi yung subject area lang yung ituturo niya, kundi focus dun sa needs ng bata. Yun po yung nangyayari sa remedial instructions. Kaya yung focus ngayon ay more talaga po sa literacy, yung foundational skills na kailangan-kailangan at dapat na palakasin for the matatag curriculum. Thank you po. Um, STS, I, I, I'll go back. I, I know that uh, uh, this is in the past, no? but I just want to understand uh, in the slide that we showed earlier, only 12%, for example, in grade um, 6, only 12% of our teachers managed to complete all the competencies. No, nangyari yan on the ground? Yes po, nagkaroon po kami ng uh, kangay checklist kung ano yung hindi naituro, ano yung naituro pero hindi talaga na master ng bata. Meron din namang naituro pero talagang hindi na master. How much more yung hindi naituro? So the more na hindi yung mga master ng bata. Marami po kasing dahilan yon. Siyempre, the, yung lahat ng kabalahan ng mga bata. At siyempre, yung mga preparation din ng teachers. Pero ngayon, dahil sa loob ng isang linggo, sa halip na five competencies yung dapat na ituturo in just one week, so, meron siyang dalawa na lang or tatlo. So, ang mas nangyayari, mas maraming practice exercises ang ginagawa ng bata para ma-master niya talaga yung competency instead of yung five competencies na kailangang matapos. So, basta maituro kahit na walang mastery. Ngayon, ang focus po talaga, mastery of the foundational skills muna. So, yun po yung napakagandang feature ng matatag curriculum. Pati si teacher, mas uh, yung satisfaction niya na hindi yung paspasa ng turo para lang makover ng lahat ng competency. So ngayon, mas nakikita nila yung paano yung mas magiging approach, paano may papasok ang critical thinking skills, the 21st century skills, instead of parang nagahabol tayo sa competency na dapat may turo. So mas nagiging creative si teacher ng kanyang mga approaches aside from yung nga pong collaborative expertise. More minds are better than one. So... Marami nagsishare kung, oh ito, mahirap itong ituro ngayon sa mga batang ito dahil kailangan may marami munang pag-research si teacher. Hindi yung sa dami ng competency, pagod na pagod na si teacher ng paghahanap ng kung anong ituturo. Magpiprepare pa siya ng mga activity sheets. Samantalang po ngayon, soft copy and hard copy are given by DepEd. At yun po yung malaking tulong for the matatag curriculum. So more na lamang po dun sa mga pilot implementers, focus kami kung how to really teach the lesson and how to ensure yung mastery talaga ng mga competencies na yun. In, the, in the past, uh, nangyari na one competency per day. 
not necessarily naman po, depende po kasi on yun sa... Average. On the average. On po. Average. Siguro po mga four in a, in, in a week. Four in a week. At uh, dun sa competency na yun, may pagkakataon pa na sinasub competency pa yun ni teacher. Kasi yung may mga prerequisite skills na hindi siya agad pwedeng maituro dahil basic muna. Hindi mag-grasp ng bata yung lesson. Kailan And tinuturo yun in one hour. Kasi per yes, subject po. is one hour. In one hour po. Lalo And tinuturo na, niya to 40 children, to 40 kids. Opo. So, Then halimbawa po yung mga kindergarten students, hindi yan halimbawa nag-daycare. Automatic kinder na yan. So wala pa silang prior knowledge. So yung competency, nakaredeng ituturo. So ma napakahirap yun para kay teacher at kay uh, student. Kaya ngayon, talagang hinimay na hinimay na talagang matutunan kaya ng uh, cognitive domain ng bata yung competency na dapat may turo sa kanya. Yung parang palalakasin muna po ang foundation skills, parang yung pinakita nung sa Singapore, yun muna ang palalakasin kahit kaunti muna dun sa maliit. Kasi pa paano mag-higher uh, mag thinking skills ang bata ay yung simpleng pagsasalita ay hindi niya nagagawa. Pagsusulat, pagbabasa ay hindi. Narinig ko ngayon with, uh, in this pilot, one teach, uh, in a week there are two competencies, from four na reduced to two. Uh, on the average, uh, of course, different subjects will have different... Uh, on the average. Uh, so, in other words, mayroon na siyang extra time to emphasize and to do mastery. Okay. Parang sa 200 days, na ang 180 ay yung non-negotiable sa talagang dapat na ituturo, kung may 120 competencies po dyan, so 180 uh, versus 120, so mas malaking ano yun. Uh, parang hindi naman ibig sabihin isang competency lang yung isang araw, kundi mas malaki yung, yung uh, ika nga ay period para ma-master yung competency. 120 over 180. Teacher training. No? Um, of course, pilot to. And uh, did you undergo teacher training? There are teachers. Ah uh, yes, po. We had our uh, uh, teachers training in the Blue Lane. Three days po yon. Uh, participated not only by the teachers but also by the department heads, supervisors, school heads, and uh, with all the regional team and uh, the central office team. So hindi po si teacher lang ang involved. Lahat po kami, including us ay kasama po doon. Ipinaliwanag ano ang matatag curriculum, paano ito ituturo, ano ang approach na dapat gawin sa pagtuturo dito. So talagang pagdating po sa training ay napakaganda ng naibigay nila. And not only that, yung support, uh, yung laging may collaborative uh, meeting din kami with the regional office and with the central office kung ano yung nangyayari. Hindi yung at the end of the month pa kami mag-uusap-usap, kundi sa simula pa lang, during the preparatory, marami na pong, marami na pong pagpupulong, marami ng uh, mga meetings and conferences prior pa po dun sa actual uh, orientation and training given to teachers. And may mga susunod pa po doon. Aside from, of course, the division initiatives na may mga training din kami para sa mga teachers namin. The three days, is it enough uh, for training? Uh, I want to get the uh, sentiment and the experience of the implementer. So is three days enough for uh, implementing the new curriculum based on your experience? Huh? Uh, three days will not be enough, but as per Deputy Central Office, there will, that is just an initial training. There will be more. And not only that, we also uh, have some trainings to, to be given to all our teachers also, especially the Matatag implementers. Yeah, Director Ariela, go ahead. Uh, I just like I just would like to add to that, um, sir. Uh, that's the that uh, what complements actually the training is the collaborative expertise that's happening. So that uh, and that was the very reason why we had to include the instructional supervisors, school heads. Uh, education program supervisors to be part of the training so that during the collaborative expertise while the teachers are preparing because there are two one is a collaborative expertise to uh, plan uh, to prepare and plan for the lesson for the whole week the following week and the second collaborative expertise is to review it what had happened in the teaching learning for the whole week so we that's a That, that complements actually the training for our teachers. And then technical assistance are being provided by our instructional supervisors. Collaborative expertise. Collaborative expertise. That's the last session that, that uh, yeah, happened. I was going to say, yes. isn't that an old concept? It's been there for 
yeah. a long, long time. It's actually an old concept, sir. Dirty action cells? Yes, it's actually an old concept. It so happened that in the past, it did not form part in the class program. So that kung kailan lang may panahon, Doon lang sila nagkakaroon noon ng lock sessions. This time, they really have to do it every week to really prepare. And so, bale, twofold po ngayon yung ginagawa natin, just like what happened in the National Learning Camp. We are capacitating the teachers. We, as, uh, we provide them assistance to, for them to be able to teach better. And with that, we get to improve the performance of our learners. So initially, I know you've been implementing this for um, one month and a half, no? Wala pang two months, tama ba? So, but initially, it seems like it's a positive uh, experience so far, you know, so far. Uh, the next challenge is how to implement this on a nationwide basis. We have uh, almost 50,000 schools nationwide. No? So um, uh, it's important to document all the... The good things and the bad things, of course, no, and the challenges, so that we will learn from the pilot testing and uh, solve all of those before implementing it nationwide. No? Yeah. I'd like to add to that, sir, so that uh, we are the expertise of our specialists in the central office um, is also needed, then they can just invite um, our specialists during their collaborative expertise also. Okay. We'll, we'll jump to... Um, we invited other pilot schools, but we'll jump to... Uh, our resource, other resource persons, uh, particularly some of the uh, experts that we invited. We'll start off with uh, PNU, the, um, Dr. Jeannie Hoxon. Um, any comments and observation? I know you've been very involved in the uh, uh, in, in curriculum research and uh, teacher training. So uh, please um, uh, share your thoughts on, on this matter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, the Matatag curriculum, sorry, backtrack, uh, the Philippine Normal University supports the direction of the Matatag curriculum for two big reasons, uh, Mr. Chair. First is that the congested curriculum is not helping anybody in the country. So that alone is already a, a reason for reviewing. And if that's the only reason for our reviewing, done na po tayo doon. The second point is that the context of the Matatag curriculum is now going to the schools. For quite a while, we've been forgetting that the Philippines is a special case in a sense that ang ating mga skwelahan ay, ay naroroon sa iba't ibang sitwasyon. So pag ibinaba natin ang curriculum na ang view natin lagi ay ang, uh, ang mga skwelahan ay nag operate on the same context, on the same level, may problema na tayo agad sa implementation. So the Matatag curriculum, ini Tiningnan niya, dahil nag-decongest siya, tiningnan niya ang konsepto ng isang malaking bahagi na para sa amin sa curriculum developer sa teacher education ay mahalaga. And that is flexibility, Mr. Chair. Ang mga nakaraang curriculum ay uh, dahil malawak at mahaba ang kanilang uh, tinatarget ng mga competencies, walang flexibility ang guro na umikot at maituro ang, ang sa tingin niya ay da, nararapat gawin. At nasanay ang mga teachers natin doon. So kahit sabihin natin ngayon, the Matatag Curriculum is now flexible, hindi yan maintindihan ng ating mga kaguruan. Kasi for quite a while, they were they were accustomed to doing a curriculum and delivering a curriculum asked of them to deliver. They were not part of, of the flexibility context no? noong mga nakaraan. Ang, uh, panahon. Ngayon, with the Matatag curriculum, the flexibility is given there. Dahil binigyan natin ng konti na lamang na competency, natatargetin ng isang aguro sa loob ng isang linggo, uh, mayroon siyang flexibility na maging mas mabilis kasi natapos na niya eh. Or mas mabagal pa kasi kailangan na niya. Kasi hindi niya tinatarget ang mas maraming competencies in a given month or in a given quarter. So susu susundan ko lang po na sana tanggalin na rin yung, yung one-size-fits-all na exam kasi hindi rin siya nakakatulong. Si teacher kasi kahit na binigyan mo siya ng flexibility, eh kaso itetest naman. Itetest naman ng division. So mapipilitan pa rin siya na kailangan niyang abutin ang mga bagay na sa tingin niya hindi naman maabot ng kanyang mga estudyante. No? So medyo may pagkatok din tayo sa level na yon sa mga divisions na baka pwedeng pigilan itong mga ganitong uh, pagtingin sa pagtataya o sa assessment at sana pigilan din ang mga supervisors na natapos mo na ba ito, natapos mo na ba ito. So may, may takot na gano'n ang guro. Going back sa flexibility, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, Yung guro, hindi siya sanay na maging flexible kasi kailangan matapos niya ang lahat. So, 
Uh, I, I'm happy to hear the SDS and, and the, the school head saying na masaya mga guru ngayon. I think it's premature to say that kasi kailangan nating sanayin ang guru na pwede pa siyang mag-involve ng kanyang sarili. Uh, the second layer ng flexibility na ini, inilatag ng matatag curriculum is the materials. Uh, hindi ko po masagot yung, yung, uh, yung textbook kasi hindi, hindi po kami uh, kasama sa usapan doon. Pero yung material na ginamit ng uh, Department of Education, yun yung pisahang gamitin sa National Learning Camp. And it is successful at some point, not successful in some point because it's the first time. Nothing is successful, I think, in the, during its first uh, implementation. Ay kinuha din nila ang konsepto at din nila ngayon sa matatag curriculum. Ibig sabihin nung sinabi ni SDS kanina na ang mga guru natin tumatanggap na ngayon ng lesson exemplar or lesson plan or a plan. At kasama noon ang mga activities na pwede niya ipagawa sa mga estudyante ay malaking tulong. There's a downside to that, Mr. Chair. When the teacher is used to using something that is given to them, again, wala siyang kakayahan na maging flexible. But the materials included a level of flexibility such that the teacher is able to say, tapos na ako sa activity na ito, lipat ako. Right? Ngayon po, dahil bago itong framework na ito, sa tingin ng Department of Education at ang kas kasama po namin ay ang, uh, ang BLD dito ay uh, kailangan mo nang tumanggap ng teacher ng exemplar o ng uh, plan sa loob ng isang buwan at dire-diretso ito. Eventually, sana ang teacher ay payagan natin for this quarter, meron siyang exemplar para sa lahat ng araw na kailangan niya. Halimbawa po isang linggo. Sa loob ng isang linggo may app, may limang araw na magtuturo ang teacher, may exemplar siya para sa limang araw at may flexibilidad siyang magmanipulate ng mga na mga kailangan niyang gawin doon. Sa susunod na linggo sana apat na lang. Para may kakayahan ang teacher na isipin naman niya ano ang gagawin niya sa ikalimang araw. Ang susunod na linggo baka tatlo na lang. Hanggang ang ating mga guro ay kaya na niyang gawin no? ang kaniyang ang level ng competency sa pangangailangan ng kanyang mga estudyante. Nakalagay po yun sa level ng plano nila. But currently, I agree with them na kailangan meron muna kasi hindi sanay ang ating mga kaguruan pa. The third layer ng uh, flexibility is the collaborative expertise, which is, as you said, uh, Mr. Chair, nandun naman na yung learning action cell for quite a while, but it has not been ingrained in the system such that our teachers use it for collaborative for collaboration talaga. May takot pa ang, ang guro ngayon, uh, I think, kung paano mag-collaborate. So, hawak nila yung exemplar and they'll talk about, oh, what do you mean by this activity? Anong ibig sabihin nito? Paano ito ituro? Hindi, wala akong ganitong klase ng material. No? So, importante yung collaborative ex expertise. Ang pang, at the beginning of the week, they come together. Paano natin gagawin ito for the week? At the end of the week, they come together again. Ano yung mga challenges na sinet natin ng Monday? Ano ang, ano ang mitigation natin for, for, the last, uh, for this week? Ano ang mga ginawa natin together? So that's collaboration, and I think that's, that's critical. Finally, on the layer of flexibility, Mr. Chair, ay yung kakayahan ng guro to, to, ac to accept or to have that instructional supervision very much needed coming from the school head, from the master teacher, at isama na natin yung mga supervisors. Um, the instructional supervision has to be redefined in the view of really the need of the classroom. And the collaborative expertise framework allows for that. Um, may I also say that the 35 schools um, pilot is necessary, I think, for us in the Philippines, because with so many errors and so many, sorry, but with so many challenges along the line, we needed to ensure that a, a concrete factor, concrete factors and system are in place before we go to the field. Uh, although, siguro baka hindi ganong katagal ang, ang implementation, sana ay mas mabilis, no? And I don't know, I'm not very privy in terms of the reason behind the the faced the too long faced implementation finally uh, the philippine normal university po was tapped by the department of education to support the work on the materials not the textbook but we're, we're really after the teacher. Happy to report that currently we have about 42 institutions across the country assisting PNU in preparing this. We have about um, 
uh, 12, if I'm not mistaken, 12 cent centers of excellence. Um, no, no, no. 21 centers of excellence assisting us, including uh, my, co my neighbor here, UP, centers of development for uh, all local colleges to the members of the National Networks, uh, ne National Network of Normal Schools, five of us, helping us in the writing of the material. The DEPED uh, teachers are also going to support us to ensure that there's a balance between the perspective of the TEIs and the Department of Education. So, marami-rami po ang uh, challenges ng uh, matatag curriculum, uh, pero naniniwala kami na uh, papunta ito sa mas maayos. Uh, yung Finally po, Mr. Chair, the curriculum po is the most important document in any program, in any academic program. But the delivery is another case. The intended and the implemented curriculum are two different cases. And unfortunately, dun tayo laging may gap. Maganda man ang curriculum natin, we have concerns in the implementation. And at the heart of that implementation are our teachers. So we always go back there to that context of supporting the teachers. So uh, baka po hindi ko nabanggit, manggitin ko na, ang isa pong magandang feature pa ng matatag now, it's a school-based implementation. Nasa skwelahan sila bumababa. So, hindi na 500 of them being asked to come and, and being, being trained. No? So medyo may lapat na sa school at uh, palagay ko titignan yun sa pilot implementation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Dr. Jeannie, any questions from my minority leader? I have a question. Uh, yeah. um, you mentioned teachers and I remember one of the rationale to strengthen the Teacher Education Council is that disconnect between pre-service and in-service. And the in-service, um, uh, the in-service teachers are teaching uh, a curriculum that has never been exposed at the pre-service level, therefore the disconnect. Now we're entering into that same uh, scenario. Uh, and again, I'm not an expert in education, but it seems to me that this problem is recurring all over again. So I, I want to ask uh, Dr. Gini, who's um, uh, an expert in teacher education, are we entering into that same problem? And how do we address that? Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> how do we address? So we make the TEC work. That's the that's the that's the purpose. And when it it starts working, Mr. Senator, uh, gagawin na niya ang itinalaga ng batas sa kanya. Man, di ba? Uh, we are changing the curriculum to a streamlined curriculum, and then naririnig ko yung most essential skills or foundational skills, most essential competencies which I assume are already also included in the current curriculums. Hindi ko masyado makita how, why are we so worried sa transition and dapat this is supposed to be easier work, focusing on the most essential. So, siguro just to explain to the teachers, ano yung changes, but on how to teach the most essential, do not tell me the teachers are not yet uh, equipped on how to teach the most essential of the competencies. Medyo malungkot yung if, that's, uh, if there is an admission na may problema tayo rin. Yeah. I don't think may masyadong mabigat na problem dapat ito. Especially, eh, kung nasusundan ko kayo ha, magmula kanina, that we are focusing, di ba? Sa ganyan, scattered, we are now focusing on, and, uh, and, and, the, and the items you are focusing on are most likely already found in the existing curriculum. Most likely nandun na yung mga yan eh. Oh, so, dinefine lang natin ang mas mabuti. And uh, itong point out natin, Chairman, itong ano yung collaboration? Ano yung? Collaborative experience. Collaborative expert, expertise. Expertise. Na being an old concept. Ibig sabihin, now that you feel the benefit of it, actually, I will give credit to your leader, to the Secretary of Education. So, kasi... Alam na pala yung sekreto na yan, yung method na yan, alam na yan eh. O except that, yun, siguro noon, paper, uh, paper implementation, now talagang tutukan na. And then uh, you, you, you uh, the Secretary of Education as well as the support supporting team to the Secretary of Education understand the value of collaborative expertise and you are now executing it properly. So, 
Yun yun eh. So, yun yung sa form eh. Sa substance is the curriculum. Agree na nga kami ron eh sa curriculum. Agree. So, yung form, how to, how to execute it, sabi nga ni Dr. Oxon, is the implementation. But, dapat, hindi, hindi kayo, wala na dapat shock sa system because if I understand it, the new curriculum is focusing on the most essential learning competencies unless they were absent or they are absent from the present curriculum. And that is the saddest thing that I will ever hear. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, actually, I would like to affirm what was said by Senator Wina Waleback that indeed we still receive teachers fresh from the the TEIs that are not really ready to, to teach. So that what we do first in the Department of Education as we hire them is to first consider the training for them. But I'd like to add also to what you mentioned earlier, sir, about the collaborative expertise. Uh, the very reason, one of the very reason, uh, one of the reasons why our teachers can do this already because uh, of the um, taking out of some ancillary services. Um, so with the hiring of non-teaching personnel, at least there are people doing the job for them already. Okay. Sir. Yeah, ano lang po, I just would like to also... Uh, uh, tawag dito, uh, share and affirm what uh, you found out, Senator Pimentel, that um, it's really the secretary that made sure that the teachers are removed from all these ancillary tasks because there are times when the teachers do so many things except teach. And that's why uh, now there's a laser focus on instructional core. And that's very important to us. Number two, uh, it's uh, ensuring that the public that the public has uh, a say in the curriculum. That's very important as well in the making of the curriculum. Number three, that uh, our secretary is very focused on uh, that the the students really uh, having foundational skills. She's very very. Uh, uh, focus on that as well. She said literacy and numeracy, they have to master that early on. And that's why if you take a look at our keys of our key stage one, that's really our focus. So there are many things that are happening, good things that are happening in the, re the Department of Education. And it's all because also of the leadership of our secretary. The minority leader made a very good statement, and some can I want to ask uh, anyone from the panel? Um, our teachers, no? they're they're trained, and now we have reduced the number of competencies to the most essential. Does it need drastic training? But that's a very good statement. I'm not again. We're coming from a layman point of view, but for coming from also. That experience when we were crafting the Teacher Education Council and we found out that there are uh, domains that are not uh, uh, synchronized or aligned with uh, the K-12 curriculum um, that created problems for our teachers when they are teaching. So, so the, the question is, is it going to be, is this a drastic change that our teachers need to be drastically trained? Um, looking at the curriculum and how it compares with the K-12 curriculum, uh, even the curriculum did not undergo drastic changes except for the uh, decongestion of the curriculum. That was really drastic and it is needed. And so the training would involve also a reorientation of the curriculum because, uh, you know, you have to tell them what are the changes, but at the same time also, it will not hurt if they take a look at the other pedagogical approaches that are, uh, was this, that respond to the, really the, the needs of the children at this time because our children or our learners are now... Uh, 
digitally and technologically savvy. And so they have to make sure that our teachers understand the repercussions of uh, being uh, technologically savvy as well. Uh, and so these are some of the reasons why there is uh, an upskilling and uh, reskilling. Okay, but not really to drastically change or uh, I mean, uh, there are there are pedagogies that are, uh, if uh, Dr. Jenny will agree with me and all the other uh, uh, resource persons here, there are time-tested pedagogical approaches that are, are, are uh, was this, uh, positive and therefore will redound to better learning outcomes. So yun lang po, yung uh, ano ba ang bago ngayon in terms of the uh, social media, because we need to harness social media, how can the teacher uh, leverage that social media so that the students can understand better the lesson? That That's just an example po. I will not discount the fact and the need to to activate the Teacher Education Council, no? considering that we have a new curriculum, and again, part of the responsibilities under the power of this new Teacher Education Council is to align, no? I think that's the, the right term, align the, the new curriculum to uh, the, the, um, the policy standards and guidelines uh, being used in the pre-service level. No? So that, I think that is a very important statement that we have to make. Uh, considering that we're now in the midst of implementing the new curriculum. We'll call on um, Dr. Uh, Javier of uh, UP. Any comments, sir? Magandang hapon po, Senator Robin at Senator Pimental. So the UP Diliman uh, College of Education really commends the Department of Education for that move to decongest the curriculum per se. No? At, uh, I have scribbled down some of the things that could be relevant in terms of the implementation, as we have already discussed, actually. You know? So, yun nga pong una is learning resource production, na banggit na ito. Uh, teacher training, which is in-service and pre-service. So, na-address na rin, napag-usapan na rin. Nabanggit din ni uh, Dr. Jenny yung assessment of learning. Specifically, we, are, we have that penchant to, to mimic PISA and TIMS, no? So we would want to have a nation, uh, nationwide testing uh, instrument. Pero ang ano namin is, sana it could be context-based, school-based for that matter. Although, syempre, in terms of uh, logistics in preparation, Baka mas ma, mahirap ito sa Beya. So, no? so yun po. Uh, meron lang kaming some issues related to, siguro nga, because UP uh, really subscribes to uh, multi-based, uh, uh, multilingual education, mother tongue based. So we really would want to insist on making use of MTBMLE as instructional peda, ano, no, tool. Even if nawala na siya as a subject, so sana naman talaga po, ano, ay talagang maituro ng ayon sa naiintindihan ng mga bata na lengguahe ang mga aralin, lalo na doon sa key stage 1 natin. So, yun po. And then, pangalawa, although nabanggit na yung intended versus the implemented, okay, kailangan pa rin talaga yung huwag natin may mawala yung idea ng context-based learning na nangyari, especially do sa K-12, na-open yun, ano? even sa senior high school, kung ano yung saan magaling yung isang region or area, ay gamitin yung mga uh, nakikita doon in terms of culture, uh, etc. No? So, yun po. Uh, in terms of the phrasing lamang, no, ano, sa mat, yung ma, ano, no? so nakalagay kasi doon yung job ready. Alam niyo naman, medyo at issue yan sa amin. Kasi parang we are advocating for human capital para, para, uh, theory on ano, ano, education. Why not make it, although syempre naka-etch naka na yan in, ano, on paper, make it really liberative, no? nakapagpapalaya talaga na edukasyon. And 
we are espousing our students to become future proof, di ba? So, nandun yung creativity, di ba? Yung critical thinking, communication. Sana yun ang mas naging napalutang na, na idea. Then po, allow me to read uh, two position papers uh, prepared by our science education area and the uh, SPED. So yung sa SPED, parang alam nyo na siguro kung anong <laughs> kailangan namin. No? Um, this is with regards to the science muna po. Ah. We will be submitting this to the secretariat para po may kopya din yan. So the Matatag Science Curriculum aims to achieve scientific, environmental, and te technology and engineering literacy of all learners. Also mentioned that it recalibrated the science curriculum and presenting the big ideas and cross-cutting concepts in science. So emphasize the development of durable understanding among learners as well as skills applicable in various contexts. So on this end, we believe that it helps clear, uh, establish the clear expectations fostering engagement, and supports continuous improvement in education. So maganda po yung idea. As compared to the other uh, learning areas, as we have uh, heard earlier, so nadagdagan ng competencies from 284 to, to having 330. So again, that's a good example, uh, good plus points with regards to science. However, may mga however po kami. The higher number of learning competencies does not imply that more topics are included in the curriculum. Some topics have been removed from the new curriculum, yet the increase in the learning competencies reflects the features of the Matatag curriculum, which are a focus on foundational skills, balanced cognitive demands, clearer artic articulation of 21st century skills, reduced learning areas. That would ensure the prerequisite knowledge and skills discussed by having designated learning competencies would be enough scaffolding and transition during the learning process. Uh, moreover, it is noticeable that the phrasing of the learning competencies in the Matatag curriculum provides specific details of the topic and sometimes incorporates the activities to be performed by the students. Siguro, this is related to the flexibility that we would want them to really our teachers to, to allow themselves to practice. So, sana po hindi naman masyadong dikahon yung mga learning exemplars natin. So, nonetheless, investigating the Matatag Science Curriculum should go beyond comparing the numbers and phrasing of the learning competencies from the previous curriculum, which is uh, the Honorable uh, Chair would want us to have the next uh, hearing, you know? So, a deeper analysis could entail determining the nature of learning competencies anchored on the curricular goals and with aspiration to have the essential and enduring learning competencies. It is also noteworth noteworthy to mention that science process skills are di directly stated in the learning competencies, especially in the elementary grade levels, which are crucial formative levels. In the previous curriculum, there were verbs in the learning competencies like investigate, infer, which could be related to science process skills. However, there might be instances that the development could just be implied in the lesson activities and discussion, or sadly could be an afterthought. Hence, this accentuates the importance of labeling science process skills as learning competencies. This can facilitate the deliberate and purposive development of the skills, consciously uh, developing them, them in, in the lessons and activities. Uh, examining the sequence of topics in the Matatag Science Curriculum holds equal significance, as it can influence how students learn the lessons. The topics are logically sequenced, developmentally appropriate, and aligned with science of learning principles. So plus points po yan. Remarkably, the Batatag Science topic sequence exhibits the cognitive principle of connect, limit, enhance. The topic sequence seems to have a storyline within and across grade levels. The topics are connected, ensuring the prerequisite concepts discussed and contain deliberate sessions on connecting the topics to real life scenarios. 
So I'm mentioning here the plus points for the curriculum mismo, the, uh, the intended curriculum. Okay. Specifically, new information that is learned meaningfully and relevantly facilitates a more durable understanding of the lesson. For this reason, the strategy integrated in the Matatag Science Curriculum incorporated ways to manage the cognitive load by spreading learning sessions and building on initial understanding through applying knowledge to new contexts for retention and deeper understanding. The implementation, ito na nga po yun. So the intended is okay for us in terms of the science situation area. So now the implementation, some caveats po. No? The implementation of the Matatag Science Curriculum is another story to be unraveled. There should be multifaceted teacher training sessions that would capacitate teachers for pedagogical content knowledge. This could be facilitated by a study on how the teachers understand and implement in their classroom the teaching and learning approaches specified in the science curriculum framework. Actually, the, the shaping uh, document has all those grand pedagogical uh, ano, no? gagagaling po siguro ng mga bata talaga pagka naituro ng maayos. Sana. Uh, ito po yung ano namin with regards to the implementation. The intended curriculum is so good, sana po ay maging, yung sa implementation mas maging maayos. So this one naman, uh, Honorable Chair, is regarding the uh, ano po naman, sa SPED. Ano, parang ayaw niya magpakita. So, so, the University of the Philippines College of Education actually uh, advocates for inclusive education and we would want to uh, express this voice in this forum. So, we, the special education cluster of the UPD Diliman College of Education, submit our position regarding the Matatag curriculum to establish the four critical components of its agenda. Um, first, from its review, the SPED cluster finds that the Matatag curriculum augments the K-12 curriculum and supports senior high school, providing better career pathing and developing learner competencies for chosen paths. The K-12 curriculum should provide knowledge and develop competences and skills appropriate for the demands of the 21st century. Recognizing that the learners in the educational system are diverse, so ito na po yung focus ng SPED, we emphasize that this goal should be for all learners and should not exclude minority groups so that all Filipino learners can equitably access gainful employment and, and live a life of dignity. Thus, the proponent uh, must ensure that the component also considers and addresses the learner diversity and, and needs. So we're talking with about uh, learner with disabilities at the same time, the uh, indigenous peoples. Next one. Uh, the education sector has suffered and continues to progress at a snail's pace towards the effective inclusion of students, all learners, particularly those from the minority groups students from indigenous people's groups, socioeconomically marginalized learners, because its budget has been slashed countless times in favor of some other agendas. Decades after the Philippines signed the UNESCO Salamanca Statement on Special Needs in 1994, the lack of disability-friendly school buildings is sadly evident. Existing school buildings are still inaccessible to LWDs, classrooms are congested, and many school teachers and children still have difficulty accessing technology that would bring them to 21st century teaching and learning. So we subscribe to the idea that budget prior prioritization will address uh, this, uh, these concerns. Next point, to be truly inclusive, the Department of Education needs to prioritize system changes for schools, and specifically, yun yan, sa K-12. The critical component calls for comprehensive programs and support services, which are actually advocated 
in the index of inclu inclusion, specifically uh, the creation of inclusive cultures, producing inclusive policies, and evolving inclusive practices to achieve inclusive reform in the education system. Last one. So give support to teachers for to teach better. Uh, this component of the Matatag is, uh, is timely because with the recent enactment of the Inclusive Education Act of uh, 2022, RA 11650, teachers need the most support in terms of resources. For example, well-built and designed classrooms, instructional kits, training to serve the learners better, especially those with learning needs, special learning needs. We cannot overemphasize the importance of in-service teacher training in the, con in the content areas of the uh, K-12 or K-10 and the special needs and inclusive education. The SPED cluster of UP uh, College of Education is involved in such training with DepEd, receiving teachers, school principals in the rollout of the inclusive education. However, there is a need for a more intensive training necessary for disability and needs detection, identification, creation and implementation of individualized educational plans, application of principles and strategies for universal learning, and differentiation of curriculum and instruction, to name a few. Of significance also is the need for teacher education institutions to craft and offer courses towards raising knowledge, competence and skills in special needs, and inclusive education for their graduates to teach and collaborate in delivering the K-12 Watatag curriculum and more than adequately meeting its expectations and demands. If indeed Batatag would subscribe to Bansang Makabata, kailangan para sa lahat. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Javinyar. I have some questions, but I'll reserve it later on. Uh, we'll do the rounds first so that uh, everyone can give us their thoughts on the topic. We'll call on Dr. Dasas of um, uh, UST College of Education. Any comments, sir? Good afternoon. Po. Magandang hapon. Um, I think much has been said, and I'm in a difficult position because some of the things that I'll be saying are already mentioned. But I'll underscore something very important. Siguro... Magandang tignan po natin yung curriculum from two lenses, intended and implemented. And I think as we examine the matatag curriculum, i-examine natin parehas. Um, while I may not completely agree with Doc Joel that the intended curriculum is fully furnished, it has good features. Uh, one, uh, the integration of 21st century skills, very much needed yon, very good po yon. Values integration, we need that more than ever. And the big ideas, I think it was not mentioned, but the big ideas inclusion is a very good feature. Um, but then again, there's still much to be desired into how these are articulated into specific competencies, because most competencies remain to be discipline specific with some targeting 21st century skills, some values, but mostly are cognitive in nature. So I guess we have to look into the articulation of these um, big things, uh, 21st century skills, values integration, and big ideas into the intended curriculum. Um, I agree earlier with the comment that there's a lot of pedagogy involved. So we can also have to, by selecting pedagogy, we don't just uh, offer a menu of pedagogy. We have to be able to take ownership of what the pedagogy is. And we have to also look at the alignment of these pedagogies vis-a-vis -vis the learning behavior. Because some may be behaviorist, some may be more constructive. They may be contradicting. So um, in terms of the intended curriculum, um, I actually applaud the ed uh, of removing already the weekly um, the, the weekly division of um, competencies, which I think, uh, to, my, to my knowledge and through the small investigations we have conducted, has been quite limiting teachers in their ex exercise of agency. The budget of work, sometimes called definitive budget of work, is so definitive that you have to really finish one competency in a given time, which now prevents the teacher to decide uh, whether the competency can be collapsed, can be merged, 
could be resequenced in that matter. So uh, perhaps if uh, Doc Jenny was uh, pushing for knocking on assessment, how could we knock into the, because the current Matatag curriculum doesn't define which one goes week per week. I think at the implementation level, we have to also couple that with uh, digressing from the definitive budget of work because it gives uh, teachers more exercise of what Doc Jenny has been mentioning, agency, into how to decide to collapse, merge, because that's very important. And part of teacher uh, confidence is, of course, being able to have that participation in decision making. So in terms of implementation, I'll keep this short. I know we're all tired. Okay. In terms of implementation, perhaps we have to look at the pilot study. I have to surface that. Uh, we have to be more transparent into the um, in terms of the design of the pilot study, who is conducting the monitoring. Well, uh, Deputy Memorandum 34 mentions that. How is monitoring done, both from an internal and external lens? While we do trust our colleagues from DepEd, and we know you're doing a lot of work, um, there's also value into an external lens looking into the pilot study and how it informs the revision. I think that's very crucial because we're not doing pilot study simply for pilot study's sake. We have to be able to look at pilot study from the lens of informing the revision. And um, Mr. Chair, earlier you were mentioning, can we not just do this? In curriculum, there's such thing as a curriculum cycle. And part of implementing something new may not necessitate just doing it because it's quite similar to the last one. Um, I agree with Director Andaya. Part of the cycle would be teacher training, developing the materials, and training the teachers how to use these materials. But I'd like to put forward again another thing in terms of the implementation. We have to target really preparedness and what knowledge, skills, and values do teachers need to have in order to implement the curriculum? Are they the old set? Are they the new set? We were mentioning earlier uh, TEIs producing not so ready um, graduates. Uh, then we have to also factor in those seasoned teachers. How do, we, how do we now develop a training program that's more responsive to experience, those who undergone K-12, and those who are newly inducted for the first time? So I think part of the training is not just being able to cascade. I think DepEd, uh, with all due respect, has subscribed to the cascade model because of the scalability of the training, budget constraints as well. But we have to look at the cascade model from the lens of, is it really working? Asian Development Bank would say it lacks effectiveness and impact. I think we have to look into a training program, not just on familiarity, on how to teach, what the curriculum is and its features. How do we now tap on what Doc Jenny was mentioning earlier as decision making? What happens if my learners are this? How do I decide? Capacity building must zero in on teacher decision making. And in relation to the pilot study, we have to capture that. I think the good principal was able to mention uh, they, they were deciding because the learners were not prepared. I think these are data that we need to capture what decisions were partaken, why, and I think if we're able to have an external lens analyze those, they're doing a lot in the pilot already. I think the analysis cannot be performed by these people already. So um, I suggest and I highly um, recommend that DEPED open itself to involvement of external interested parties to the pilot study, make the data available, uh, provide mechanisms for interested parties to examine pilot studies in the limited capacities that we have. Centers of excellence like the University of Santa Tomas are just waiting to be tapped. And we're very much willing. Um, at no or minimal cost, we can shoulder part of it because that's part of our mission and our call as teacher education institutions. We're not just center for excellence just for bragging bragging sake. We have to make impact, and this is a clear impact that I think no COE would ever run away from. Um, second would be uh, in terms of the ongoing evaluation. I think uh, matagal pa po na matatapos yung isang cohort ng curriculum, and in curriculum evaluation, you have to have several cohorts to be able to see effectiveness. Now, ongoing formative evaluation is very, very crucial because when we talk about the, the nuances, adjustments can still be made up to what extent. So again, we call on um, uh, DepEd and the other agencies to open themselves to possible involvement of external agencies. After all, we're all, all hands on deck po tayo. Because 
that what DepEd will produce will feed us in, 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 in the higher education institutions. Um, whatever failure would this Matatag curriculum have will have a direct impact on higher education institutions like us, and more importantly, teacher education institutions. And lastly, I think I'd like to piggyback to what uh, Dr. Jenny mentioned on actor-oriented curriculum implementation. Let's democratize the process. Um, when we talk about actor-oriented uh, uh, actor curriculum implementation, we have to look at how we develop teacher agency. And there are two, I, I, am, I am looking at two Cs in developing teacher agency. Number one, capacity to decide. Capacity in terms of professional development. We're very happy that there are more administrative staff hired because there really need to be more time for instruction and preparation for instruction. Any teacher would say that 80% or if not 70-80% of the teaching happens before the classroom uh, teaching is done. So how do we capacitate teachers to decide? How do we now build on capacity building measures that are really making an impact? And how do we review them? Because it's not enough that we do capacity building and we're not reviewing its impact. Uh, and second would be conditions. And this is where implementation in terms of our mid and top level administrators would come in. How do they build a condition um, that's conducive to commit mistakes? How do we build a condition wherein teachers can freely say that this is not working? How do we build a condition wherein we do not go, well, well policies are very important, but policies can be reflexive. Policies must be able to have that embrace um, of what teachers can do and cannot do. Because at the end of the day, a very conducive condition would make teachers stay. You know for a fact that there's a problem with migration and DepEd knows that. Good teachers are leaving for the states. We must keep them. And having optimal conditions to teach, to decide, to participate, I think we will attract more teachers to stay in the country. So lastly, um, I think... Thank you for inviting us this afternoon. Um, DepEd is, is doing its best. And, and we would like to also congratulate them for being able to, uh, in the limited time that they have, uh, do the revision, put inputs. I cannot just imagine who did the analysis of the public consultation because masakit po sa ulo yun, no? Nagpadala po kami. Nagpadala rin ng ibang PNU, I know, and UP. dami po nun. And that's just several of the people here, but there's more people who commented and that could have been a very difficult job. So I think um, one thing that we realize is any move to curriculum reform is really a communal effort. So uh, at the University of Santa Tomas, we are very much willing to help out whenever we can, utilizing our limited resources. Um, but I think, sabi nga po ni Dr. Joel, para sa bata, para sa bayan. Salamat po. Thank you. Is DepEd open to external observers, external um, uh, organizations who will want, who would want to study the pilot implementation? Is that is DepEd open to that uh, concept? Sir, um, that's very well um, provided in DepEd Order Number Fifty Four Series of Twenty Twenty Three. So just to inform, uh, we're going to. Uh, we will be working with uh, the Philippine Institute of Developmental Stu Development Studies with the uh, ACRC and then the Philippine Normal University Research Center uh, with that of CIMER. And the last, um, the last sentence in this particular paragraph says that other research groups may significate, sig uh, signify their intent to conduct the study. So we're open, Paul. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for, for that uh... Yeah, I can see that here in the DepEd order. So, in other words, other organizations such as UP, USD, uh, can join in uh, and do the analysis. Analysis is um, infinite. It, yes. I really believe Mr. That. Chair, if I can just ask a question. Yeah, I did read the memorandum, but it says they're open, but we're asking for the mechanism. Um, because the DepEd uh, memorandum may be silent on the mechanism. Because we have to look also on how can we, what, what are the things that we need to submit, issues on data privacy, and issues on utility of the data and analysis also matters to us when we get involved. After this, you guys can uh, network and link together. You know? And uh, like I said, no, um, analysis is infinite. Um, the more... Uh, the more people analyzing, the more people uh, looking at the data, uh, the richer the recommendations can be. You know? So I truly really believe that uh, 
we should open up um, uh, uh, analysis to other organizations who would want to uh, conduct one. So we'll, we'll call on uh, Simeo Inetec, uh, Dr. San Antonio, Dr. Dad San Antonio. And I, I, so I know you, Dr. Dad San Antonio has uh, prior experience and knowledge to, uh, on this matter. So <laughs> good afternoon. Normally, po, uh, Senator Wynn, I refuse to talk about DepEd policies now, uh, considering that I used to be part of the DepEd uh, Executive Committee. But uh, as a passionate educator, I cannot help but say I'm very proud of the team. Uh, they were able to deliver. Many of those were discussed uh, when we were trying to uh, put together the curriculum without a name yet. All we had was a year before the curriculum, but uh, I'm also glad that the, the name was uh, identified afterwards. Um, I'm glad that indeed the curriculum has been decongested. I've long silently actually violated certain DepEd curriculum standards when I was regional director. I implemented my own priorities of competencies. Um, while I did not completely abandon the 15,000 competencies, in our region we had 400 which we said a senior high school graduate should be able to demonstrate. Although um, the implementation was short-lived because I was uh, moved to the central office. And um, I think that was also the inspiration for the push to easily develop the MERCs um, at, a, at a very short notice. So um, obviously the reviews from the experts indicate that um, there's a significant, very significant decongestion um, on the phased implementation, I would like to help the group in explaining that we cannot do this in one go. Even if, of course, it's very uh, ideal to do this um, a general uh, implementation of all the grade levels, but logistically, it's going to be very, very difficult. So I'm also very glad that they implemented what we agreed that after launching, there should be a year lead time to uh, prepare the teachers, to prepare the learning resources, so that uh, the transition will not be as difficult. We have to learn from the experience of the past, where we had to do things and then prayed hard that the teachers were very uh, resourceful in looking for the resources they needed to deliver the the intended curriculum that sounded very um, uh, promising even before when we did the K-12 program. Of course, I'm also um, optimistic that the implementation will end up uh, very successful, considering that the policies now being implemented are also aligned to what I feel should be happening in the schools. Uh, VP Sara is very serious about protecting the learning time, so she has um, decided to really say that class days should be class days. And um, I think that's something that will help uh, make that intended curriculum uh, translated into a more um, uh, effective implemented curriculum later on. There's also this mechanism of, you know, lack sessions, the learning action cells in the schools. I think that will still be reinforced um, because we are concerned about making sure that the teachers are updated. Uh, this is a very, um, I would say, a very flexible way of making sure that the teachers themselves are able to identify common concerns in implementing the uh, curriculum at the levels, perhaps of the, the departments in high schools or grade levels in elementary schools. I am also, um, of course, aware that there's a career progression mechanism that's going to be supported finally. We're really, uh, I think, in agreement that the significant um, factor that will make this successful are the teachers. If we provide the teachers the opportunities to learn and uh, get rewarded um, for their efforts, um, we will um, be able to see better results. Of course, just like what was mentioned earlier, the the transparency in developing the curriculum was something that I also uh, um, uh, appreciated. I really felt that uh, the more people who are able to provide feedback on the draft, uh, the better the curriculum document would be. And yes, uh, flexibility should be there. My final, um, I would say, reminder is um, 
perhaps the implementation has also to be uh, coupled with a more empowered um, school governing councils. Um, this, the SBM, if we do this right, will be very effective in creating a community of um, school stakeholders right at the school level who will not just talk about uh, how to beautify the school, how to create more resources, but who would be discussing things related to making learning happen. Um, and at the Inotech level, of course, there's an ongoing research we're doing on uh, SBM that is future focused and um, learning focused as well. Um, and this would hopefully be able to complement what DepEd is doing. Another project we're doing now at Inotech is uh, TIGRI, uh, Technology Enabled Early Grades Reading Intervention that will be uh, complementing the national reading program that will be unveiled very soon. But uh, we've been able to collaborate with the team of the director Joyce. Uh, um, I think the, the friendships you have developed uh, while we were working together made this uh, coordination efforts uh, easier. Those are um, the things that I can share today, uh, Senator Wynn and the rest of the group. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Dads. Dr. Dads, uh, wearing your Simeo hat and looking at uh, uh, the competencies and also the emphasis, especially on 21st century skills, I think one of the, the key features of this uh, new curriculum is the emphasis on 21st century skills. In fact, I've seen um, the curriculum of uh, Australia when we went there. It was really heavy on um, digiti dig digitalization, heavy on uh, technology and all that. No? And uh, uh, you can see how Australia is really molding their learners as early as uh, kindergarten in the world of technology. Having said that, uh, based on your analysis, is is do we have is is this curriculum future proof? Meaning, are we teaching our learners with this new curriculum the skills that will future proof themselves um, and enable them to to appreciate the use of technology and digitalization uh, in their lives? Um, mm. I think it is uh, going to help the learners be ready for uh, citizenship for the future. The refinement of the 21st century um, framework of the Department of Education happened uh, while we were still working together in the Department of Education. Although, although I think there were additional things that were incorporated, but essentially we really agreed that we had to um, update and um, revise the framework we had for 21st century skills. Um, I think there's one entry there saying it should enable the children to be future oriented or, yeah. So other than that, of course, we know that uh, to thrive in the so-called uh, future, one has to possess critical thinking skills, very good uh, you know, capacity to work with teams. These are skills that are expected of citizens who will most likely succeed in the 21st century. Unfortunately, these are skills that, ha that would be very difficult to assess using the traditional paper and pencil assessment. So I think that's the other thing that should be uh, looked into by our partners at the Department of Education, although there's also this uh, um, ongoing effort we are doing with uh, on the refinement of the learner assessment framework uh, through the USAID and uh, the ILO, PH Improving Learning Outcomes Philippines, where uh, Simio Inotech is a consor consortium partner of the uh, RTI. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. San Antonio. Uh, call on our very own EDCOM uh, Executive Director, Dr. Carl Marquis, and he already started off with uh, some logistical issues on textbooks, and uh, we want to hear your thoughts on uh, the new curriculum. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Again, well, congratulations first to our DepEd colleagues. I know that they've been working very hard and we've been closely talking to them the past months ever since we started in January. And we do know that this is really a feat to be able to 
boost to do this, to implement this, to even do a pilot, and to successfully do the full implementation of K1, 4, and 7 next year. And so really our intention is to support in any way possible to make sure that the preparedness is there because at the end of the day, the goal is the same, which is to make sure that our learners have the quality of education that they deserve. Um, I would also like to reiterate uh, P. Jenny's point earlier on implementation, because I think the curriculum is good and decongested. But on the ground, what we would like to share with everyone is really the feedback we've been getting from teachers in terms of the implementation challenges that have really constrained um, the, the quality of how we've done things for the K-12 curriculum and onwards. The first is alignment, and I think, Mr. Chair, you brought up earlier the issue of alignment between the revised K-10 curriculum as well as the that technical panel of CHED in terms of the PSG, that's one thing. The other side is also PRC and what they test and whether there are tests depending on the specializations that they actually took in the PSGs of higher education institutions. But it would not even stop there. And I think a lot of our conversations with teachers on the ground, because we would have breakout groups, and in each breakout group, yung issue na lumalabas is teacher specialization, that what they are teaching is not aligned to what they were trained for in teacher education institutions anyway. So even if we have alignment in terms of the curriculum of the revised K-10 to and TEI PSGs, if they are not hired to teach that, anyway in the end, then it would be a huge problem that we will continuously need to correct through teacher training. And then I'll go to teacher training, which is in-service that we discussed earlier. What should we really train for? Kung nagbawas tayo ng competencies, kaya na ba ng teacher yon? That assumes that they have the content knowledge for those competencies because that was their training. But what if that's not the case? We need to have a more tailor-fit approach in teacher training that takes into account which teachers need more content knowledge and which ones need pedagogical content knowledge and pedagogical training. And that seems to be something that we will need to do better in. Um, I also would like to point out that we, for example, if you check the pedagogical approaches for the different learning areas that was released by DepEd, they released for each learning area several pedagogical approaches. I guess our question is, for example, in science, there are nine pedagogical approaches written. So if we're saying that we're going to train teachers for pedagogy, which pedagogy? And how are we going to do that in the next year to prepare them for the implementation of K-147? And that's just one subject alone. How about the others? Kasi napakaraming nakalista po dito. So how do we make sure? It's good to have options and that the teacher who is empowered will have a toolkit to select which would fit what type of training and what, what type of lesson and what type of learner that is in front of him or her. But how do you build this toolkit? in the teacher, and that's our question, if we are going to achieve this for next year, for 2024 implementation. The second point is flexibility, and we are happy to hear that DepEd has veered away from the, from the per week determination of competencies, because on the ground, what have been told us is that really tali yung teacher. Even if alam daw nila na yung bata hindi natutunan or wala siyang mastery sa isang subject, kailangan nilang lumipat na sa susunod na lesson by next week because of the daily lesson log, the budget of work, the detailed lesson plan. So it is perfect and in the written response of DepEd to the suggestions of EdCom in terms of the revised K-10 curriculum, and they state in their letter that DepEd trusts and empowers our teachers with the autonomy to determine the appropriate duration for a teacher to teach a particular skill or competency based on their unique classroom dynamics. This is perfect and ideal. We hope that this is seen through in the different tools used by DepEd at different offices, different bureaus, different levels, at the division level, at the school level, to make sure that in practice, this is really the case, that flexibility is something that teachers really have in implementation. Because in the past practice, in our recent consultation with teachers, it's not the case though po. So sana, I think we all have the same aspiration and it's really just underlining it. Now it's a really concern and it is there. How do we work around it or how do we resolve it? Because it is an issue and maybe it's cultural practice that we will also need to overcome. Baka hindi na kailangan, pero yun yung nakasanayan. So yung mga supervisor, yun yung hahanapin. Kahit nasa totoo, iba na yung policy. So how can we work together to make sure that these practices change in the long run? Because as VP Jenny said, kahit nagpalit ka ng policy and they, they have so much freedom now, what if they don't know yet how to do with, what to do with that freedom and how to check for that? 
pero the quality of implementation. So yung supervisors, yung mga principals, kailangan nasa parehong pahina in terms of the principles of this flexibility and what it's supposed to do. The third that I wanted to bring up is the learning gap. The curriculum is decongested, but it still assumes that the learner that goes through each level or each grade that we have has the foundational skills for that grade. What if the child or the learner is not numerate and literate? And we do know that that's not unlikely, that there are those who reach grade six without the competencies for that grade level or the foundational skills that should have been taught years and years back. How do we systematically address that? That is our question and how those learnings from the learning camp should be now embedded to how we do things because that's the reality. We need to meet the learners where they are and where the learners are would not even be in our revised K-10 to curriculum yet as ideal because we need to really bridge them to get to this point. I guess our question is, how aggressive is our effort in making sure that we get our learners there? Which connects to our question in terms of the learning camp results. We've written to DepEd twice already requesting for information on the learning camp. What is the results of the learning pre-test and post-test that is done already many, many weeks ago? Ano na pong nangyari? Sino ba yung nagpunta sa learning camp? Nag-improve ba sila? Yung mga hindi nakapunta ng learning camp na dapat nasa intervention camp, what are we doing for them now? Kasi kung wala tayong ginagawa, kahit maayos yung curriculum, how are they absorbing the curriculum if they are not numerate or literate? And how are we now doing those national learning recovery program components that were discussed in our last August 24 hearing on this? In our last August 24 hearing, we discussed several things. The National Reading Program, the National Math Program. And we were told then that the National Reading Program would be in place by October and implemented. I guess our question is, could we see? Is it now happening? Have we done the assessment to know which learners need to be in that National Reading Program, which in our August hearing, they mentioned that it was supposed to happen the week prior to August 24. So nasa na tayo in terms of our programming and our implementation of these learning recovery programs because these now, I think, must be integral to how we proceed because unfortunately, this is our norm. This is what we need to accept and what we need to resolve so that we could really go and fulfill and successfully implement the revised K-10 curriculum. How have we systematized and institutionalized these practices to make sure that we are able to meet the learners where they are today? The last question I was going to ask was the pilot. In the August 24 consultation of EDCOM, they mentioned that PIDS and ACT-RC were going to be engaged as members or as external, actually, external partners in the pilot. I guess our question is, do they have a TOR? Have they been engaged already? Because this is August 24 and it's already October 18, almost several, several months na ang nakalipas. Nag-start na po tayo ng pilot, nandito ang PIDS, and nandyan kanina yung ACT-RC. Nasa na yung status of engaging them? Do they know their responsibilities? And because from then on, we want to ask, what is the design of the pilot? What are the milestones? What are we expecting to learn in the course of the pilot? And at what point do we say that we are ready or not ready? Um, I guess two more items. One is that you know, in other countries, before they implement a revised curriculum, sir, they have three years at least to make sure that they are ready. To be honest, heroic yung effort natin to try to succeed and do all of it in one year. And this runway is actually very short. So I think it is commendable. It is heroic. But sana at the end of the day, in our efforts and in our hard work, sana it translates to what our learners actually receive. Um, one more question to DepEd that we've been asking and we've been texting you, Gina, also about this was the curriculum guides. We see in the website that the K-147 is available, but we actually could not check vertical vertically because the other grade levels are not yet there in terms of the release. We haven't seen grade two, grade three, grade five, grade six. And so while we know that the phased implementation curriculum guides are there, we actually could not verify whether the comments of EDCOM as submitted was actually um, reflected as was mentioned in the letter. Because to be honest, it is not yet physically 
checkable. So maybe may we request that and to respond to when we can expect to re really review the final Matatag curriculum as launched. Thank you. We were actually also trying to get a hold of uh, the final uh, curriculum. It's not published yet, no? Uh, not yet. Uh, not in its entirety, uh, Senator. Is, uh, is there a timetable to print it out? Because we, I actually took a look at, personally, I took a look at the, the, the first iteration of uh, the curriculum no? and uh, uh, gave me a good feel of what uh, the curriculum look, looks like. Um, is there any move to upload it and uh, ask the public to, again, take a look at it? I, it's a good idea to get part, the public involved, yeah. uh, especially on in the case of EDCOM, because we're, this is a very important uh, um, uh, issue that we want to look at. Uh, sir, uh, we'll uh, revert to you on that. We'll just uh, confer with you, sir regarding this concern. Yeah, yeah, I suggest that uh, since you started the transparency and participative concept, I, I would suggest let's continue it until the end. No? And uh, we'll really appreciate that. Uh, on the topic of uh, documentation and research, uh, one of the things that we found out in the mother tongue pilot study, there was no documentation in research. A lot of it are just anecdotal, a lot of it is just um, experiences from different implementers. I hope this will not be the same. No? Um, it's important to document the experience, to document uh, to, to, to document the feedbacks, uh, gather data for now and for future reference. Um, I, I, I can feel that this will be a um, a very important activity of DevPed for the next four years. But at the same time, we can also learn from the implementation of this uh, activity. So I would really suggest to uh, work on the documentation side. And um, in, in the DO, it's specified here that PIDS and other organizations will be uh, uh, commissioned um, to uh, help with the research and, of course, documentation. And that brings me to PIDS. Um, Dr. Abrigo is here. Um, have you uh, any comments and then have you uh, started the engagement with DepEd so far as the uh, pilot schools are concerned? Thank you so much, Senator, for inviting us and allowing us to, to contribute to the discussion. Uh, I don't have a comment, but I do have a story. Uh, DepEd approached PIDS to actually help them design an evaluation uh, no, uh, evaluation of the pilot implementation of the Makatag curriculum. Uh, there is no formal, as far as I know, formal engagement between DEPED and PIDS, and, but we are very excited and very committed uh, to this endeavor as, as this is uh, aligned with our uh, mandate uh, to conduct uh, research to to uh, inform national policy and development planning, as well as our commitment under the uh, Educational Commission uh, too. Uh, yung story ko ngayon uh, is maybe to provide uh, what has been done uh, about the study. So the uh, original um, help that we're asking from us is to design una, san i-roll out muna uh, on your pilot pilot uh, schools uh, and they gave us parameters na dapat merong IP school, dapat urban, rural, uh, different regions, you have different sizes, uh, you have the different grade levels and that's why we come up with the 35 schools. Actually, yung 35 schools has a pair na 35 control group, na 35 schools na control in the same uh, region uh, so that una, we can document paano ba yung differences in implementation, uh, and before that, syempre, yung differences with the actual um, curriculum, yung design, and then how it's implemented, but also to somehow assess if they so wish, uh, pag-uusapan po po namin kung ano yung kabuuan, uh, ano yung impact niya, at least dun sa immediate uh, outcomes. For example, kanina may discussion about uh, paano ba nagbago yung pagtuturo ng teachers? Do they have more time now uh, to to explore other uh, ano ba, pedagogies, uh, mga different na mga ways to, to teach? 
That's one. They have uh, better satisfaction, not just with their teaching, but with their life in general. And at the same time, this allows us to, to um, estimate ano ba yung potential impact nito on outcomes. So yung po yung uh, gist ng aming ginagawa. Uh, there are uh, yung original is that we have a baseline, we have a midline and an endline. Pero with our discussions previously with them, parang daw uh, there's available information from the national achievement tests that they are conducting. So we don't need to do the baseline because they will be doing it. Uh, but uh, we are also developing now yung endline. Nakafocus kami sa endline and this aligns with our commitment sa EDCOM about um, assessment. So yung mga learnings namin from what we're doing for EDCOM, uh, pinapasok din namin dito. This also allows us to, uh, to with their, of course, with, with their indulgence, uh, to test uh, some of the ideas that we have. For example, uh, right now kasi yung nat natin ay hindi siya tied sa any, anything na uh, may kinalaman yung bata. Mag-exam siya, gal galingan niya o hindi. Uh, yun yung score niya. So we feel na maybe it's... Uh, effort on the part of the children, part din sa learning nila. So how do we make it uh, low stakes to uh, somewhat uh, high stakes? So paano natin test yun? And maybe we can roll out something na, na matitest natin dito kung is it possible to have it some maybe part of a grade nung bata so that yung effort din nila, ma, ma, yung, yung mga ganong mga interventions. We're layer, layering uh, studies uh, in this um, uh, partnership with them. So I suggest, uh, since it's already specified in the DO that they'll be working together, you, you guys will be working together, suggest that we can already start the ball rolling, considering that the pilot has already begun. And uh, it's been in a, it's been what, a month and a half already in the, uh, uh, in the uh, implementation. So um, again, documentation, analysis, data gathering, it's very important for now and future reference. And uh, we seem to be quite, um, uh, we don't give that so much importance. Eh? And uh, we need that uh, in order to, uh, um, uh, as an important resource in case that we do implement new projects and new activities later on. So we'll call on um, UNICEF. Uh, Mr. Uh, Tenazas. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and everybody in the hearing. Um, I'm actually with our um, partners from UPFLCD, so I think we will be showing uh, a couple of slides. But uh, while preparing, sir, I just have a few notes from our meeting. Um, number one, UNICEF is working with DepEd on the development of the kindergarten learning uh, lesson exemplars. Um, so... Um, we're, we're deeply involved in the in the kindergarten side because we we, we believe that um, even before the kids get into kindergarten, they are already facing multidimensional challenges even before they get to school. So so um, kindergarten might be a we have evidence for this. Uh, kindergarten is the helps reduce the disadvantage that they get when they enter formal school. So we're trying to make sure that the lesson exemplars in kindergarten are are very appropriate and um, uh, suitable, beneficial for our um, students. And then number two, sir, um, different experts would have different comments on the curriculum, but I guess um, good delivery strategies also matter. So at the at the global level, UNICEF is advocating for TARL uh, teaching at the right level. So this means we're not grouping them based on date of birth, but we're grouping them in terms of abilities and skills and challenges and things like that. So uh, many recovery programs uh, are designed this way so that uh, there's uh, better better dynamics inside the classroom and things and better learning generally, sir. So globally, there's evidence for for teaching at the right level. Um, so we're trying to introduce that also in our work with the ed, not just in the lesson exemplars for kindergarten. For example, we're doing it in Region 8 as well, uh, patterned after what Region 5 has done last year with uh, ABC Plus project. Um, so um, we have we have 
uh, data or information on this one. And then um, uh, all of this just to facilitate sir, the proper transition from uh, early childhood education or the absence of early childhood education into kinder so that there's no, there's no culture shock or that uh, the foundations are really there. And then lastly, before I turn over to our colleagues from UP, uh, UNICEF continues to work with DepEd on the other areas of the BEDP, the Basic Education Development Plan, the Matatag Agenda, and even, sir, the Transforming Education Summit National Country Statement uh, that was submitted to the United Nations General Assembly last year. But uh, my, final, my final point would be... Um, in next year, sir, there would be another round of CPLM. And if that would be the first implementation of uh, the full Matatag curriculum, the next round of CPLM will now be 2029. So the people who come in uh, next year will be the same people who will probably be tested in 2029. And that represents a good uh, way to measure uh, the curriculum, the effect of the curriculum, so at, on a national scale. So uh, we're also working with DepEd to include the measurement of social emotional learning in the CPLM, in the CPLM, so that the results are uh, more holistic, and that um, we will have like better insights, uh, not just for next year, but in five years time also, so that we can also measure the effect of the curriculum. That's all, sir. Uh, I, I would pass to Dr. Echel Tongson, just to show, I think this, this would go into um, the discussion earlier about how do we look at the curriculum and the competencies just for kinder, sir, just for kinder. All right, go ahead, uh, Dr. Tongson. Yeah, um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Senator Wien. I would also like to request uh, Teacher Nam Ugadan, Assistant Professor Ugadan, from the Department of Family Life and Child Development of the College of Home Economics in the University of the Philippines. So thank you very much. And also based on the comments provided, also we agree that uh, we congratulate the DepEd for making a decongested curriculum because from over 200 uh, competencies in kindergarten, it was reduced to 46. And I'm also happy to inform you that we participated in the you know public uh, comments because uh, the uh, the what you call this the uh, uh, draft of the Matatag curriculum for kinder was sent to us for comments also, and we discussed all of these things. And I'm so happy that from from so many competencies it was reduced to 46. So we were there also during the orientation and we're conducting the retooling of kinder supervisors uh, that was done already in Makiling and also in Cebu. And also, pinag-uusapan na natin ngayon yung cognitive, but in the kindergarten level, sir, uh, we believe that <clears throat> It's not only about the subject areas, but also the development of the different domains of development. So we have a different take on the kindergarten curriculum to prepare the children also for formal schooling in grade one. So it's really very important that while we are developing their cognitive aspect or domains, it's important to note that all domains of development, including social emotional, the physical, and also the, you know, the other things related to their development are very important. It's not just enough to prepare them cognitively, but it's also very important to prepare them in terms of their uh, dispositions to learn. So it all begins in early childhood. So we cannot really uh, discount the connection of um, early childhood, the uh, below five years old, to the uh, learning competencies or the skills of the children that they will learn also in kinder, which will be the basis of lifelong learning for grade one and up to college as well. So I also agree with our, you know, <clears throat> um, resource speaker from USD saying that the, the effects of what they've learned in elementary and high school or even kinder will also have an impact on the way we will conduct our higher education courses. So it's a different take altogether because in kindergarten, we would like to promote play. So maaaring magtaka yung mga iba, bakit pinaglalaro lang yung mga bata sa school? Pinapapasok namin sila doon, pero bakit sila maglalaro lang? Well, in fact, work 
uh, play is the work of children. So wag po sanang magugulat yung mga nanay, mga tatay, even mga kamag-anak, even the other teachers who are not trained to do play-based approaches. That really children need to play because when they play, they see the connections of the things that they do. And also, we believe that it's important for children to develop first, no, to, hand, to hold um, a pen or, or uh, an, a writing implement before they're able to write their names fully. So uh, we, we have uh, discussed that play is really very important in those aspects. And then with the uh, curriculum that we have uh, for the uh, quarter one, we have only 20. 20 competencies, but it doesn't mean that we will uh, target only the 20 competencies for the first quarter. So the competencies, because we have fewer, yes, we believe that the teachers can actually concentrate more on developing these competencies all throughout the school year. So when we have already targeted uh, the competencies in quarter one, it doesn't mean that we will leave it there. We can actually use and concentrate and focus on these competencies even for the second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter so that the teachers will have more opportunity to focus and develop the competencies all throughout the school year. And then we also now in kindergarten, because we do not have subject areas there, we believe that um, it's important for children to be prepared. And there's this a burning question also why we need to involve the parents, because uh, it's really very important to involve them uh, because the parents are the first teachers of their children. So the school will be more eff effective in implementing all of the curriculum when the parents are really very involved. So with that, I'll turn you over to uh, uh, Assistant Professor Ugadan to discuss the slides because we prepared um, the connections, to see the connections also of the quarters and the themes and the sub-themes for uh, the Matatag curriculum. Magandang hapon, Mr. Chair. Magandang hapon sa ating mga kasama, mga kapitbahay, si Eduk, at saka Sir Dasas. <laughs> uh, gusto ko lang po sigurong uh, bigyan ng kaunting kwento. Uh, pero doon na tayo sa, sa slide mismo ng curriculum web. Uh, teach for forward. Is it with that? Ang tawag po namin sa aming mga sarili ay mga brain surgeons. Kaya lang kami ay non-invasive. Bakit? We are non-invasive brain surgeons because we help influence the brain architecture of young children early on. And we do this by helping facilitate meaningful experiences in the classroom and hopefully also in the homes no, with the families na ma magkaroon ng follow-through sa bahay. So kahit kami ay mga br brain surgeon, ang aming tools ay yung, yung aming ginagamit na pag-intindi ng mga bata, alamin kung nasan sila, i-connect ang kanilang nalalaman sa kanilang aaralin. Para hindi ito ganyan. Kailangan ito ay palaging meaning-based. Because that's for young children, very important yun eh. What they are learning is something that they understand. And for that to happen, we have to start where they are. So tingnan lang po natin itong, maliliit po yung words, pero dun po sa apat na, na tema ng DepEd, doon sa matatag, kinonek po namin siya. Maybe I'm, I would call this like a, like a roadmap, no? but we call this a mother web. Kasi gusto po namin ipakita na kahit ang pinag-aaralan po ay nasa quarter one, kumokonek po ito hindi lang sa nangyayari sa pang-araw-araw kung ha sakaling umusok ang bulkang taal o kaya mag-alboroto ang bulkang mayon. Hindi dahil nasa quarter four pa. Ang tungkol sa mga anyong uh, lupa ng Pilipinas ay hindi pwedeng ay hindi yan pwedeng pag-usapan kasi sa quarter 4 pa yan ano po so gusto namin ipakita sa paggawa pag-connect ng mga themes and sub-themes na ito sa mga bata ganito nila ito tinitingnan konektado sa kanilang mga araw-araw na buhay at kung ano nang nangyayari sa kanilang komunidad. And sabi natin kanina, iba-iba yung konteksto ng mga bata, ng mga skwelahan, no, ng ating public schools. Kung kaya't very important, gusto ko yung minention kanina, kailangan 
context-based siya. No? So yung developmentally appropriateness, hindi lang siya age-appropriate, individually appropriate, at saka socioculturally and linguistically appropriate. So paki next slide please. Ayaw gumalaw. Ayan. So kung, kung halimbawa po ang pinag-uusapan ay, pwede ba akong tumayo? Hindi ko kasi makita. Okay. Meron po kaming song and dance. <laughs> so kung kunyari po ang pinag-uusapan ay tungkol sa kanilang mga sarili, lumalabas po ang ganitong mga konsepto. Paki, pakipindot lang po. Sige po, susunod po. So the, these are the things that children, kindergarten children, usually talk about and they know about. So if it's about their body, we can talk about. Pakipindot lang po. Go ahead. Go ahead. So meron po siyang mga, mga themes that they can, these are the concepts that they can talk about, the parts of their body, how they move in different ways, and the different parts and how they move, uh, their, their needs, food, water, clothes. There are different people who help keep my body healthy. So papasok na rin yung tungkol sa community. So hindi po siya naka talaga lang sa isang quarter, nagko-connect, connect po yung mga themes and sub-themes. That's why when we write the learning exemplars, we have to be able to relate itong konsepto ito. Children, pinag-usapan natin ito, naalala ninyo. No? At isa po sa mga, go ahead po, tuloy pa. Sige po, pakipindot lang. Okay. Ayan. So, um, very important na ito ay they find meaning in what they are doing. And we are also excited as writers because one of the things that we're going to write about when we get to quarter three is about there are leaders in our country. And our country is led by a president. And then we, um, we elect our leaders. Yeah? And then meron pong isang sub ay uh, good leaders lead with honesty Think of the people, and they always do the right thing all the time. Those are some of the sub-themes that we put there. We think that this is important, even at kindergarten level. Okay? And because education is a process of living, not a preparation for future living, it happens now. It happens in the lives of children. It should be integrated with life, not a preparation for a remote future. So marami pong salamat sa inyong lahat. Something awesome. Um, and it, it was said several times already by all the resource speakers, the importance of pre-service and in-service training. I think uh, when we want to have the pedagogy, because there are also a list of pedagogies in the new Matatag curriculum for kindergarten, our question when we were looking at it is, what pedagogy exactly? So can we really combine behaviorism with constructivism in that aspect? So we're really arguing, but since teacher Nam and I and the Department of Family Life believes that children uh, can construct their own knowledge, by interacting with materials, by their own experiences as they talk to people around them, as they manipulate the materials that you have provided, as they read the books, as they observe the people around the community. Uh, even when they watch TV, they learn something. So in that aspect, we really have to identify what pedagogy are we going to use, especially for very young children. And we want as early as possible that children are able to articulate their feelings, they're able to articulate what they want. They develop their critical thinking skills. And it's so very important that even at a young age, they know how to empathize with people. Even with people from far away, for example, what's happening, for example, in Israel now, of course, they are not, uh, you know, uh, they're very much aware of that because they're looking at it on television and social media. So how do we now process these things even for a young children, for a young child? And also science. We've been talking about science and math as well. I don't think we need to wait 
in kinder um, in grade one or in grade two or grade three to teach science because telling about the weather and predict and predicting what will happen because it's cloudy is part of inference. It's part of knowing and learning about what will happen when it's cloudy. How do you feel when it's hot? It's already about teaching them science. When you count how many boys and girls are found in the classroom or how many pairs of shoes do you have in the classroom right now, you're already teaching them the basics of number and numeracy. So there are so many ways to do that. And in early childhood, we believe that it begins from the very beginning. That's why, Senator uh, Wien, I hope that early childhood will also be prioritized uh, in the budget. It will also be prioritized in the things that we do. Because it's all important to always you not know, focus on the children. And also, uh, one thing that we were uh, advice not to do when writing the exemplars is that it should be lit based, meaning to say at a very young age, children, even in far flung barangays or even in fifth class municipalities will be taught how to read using books. And it will be in Filipino. We were uh, told by Dep and also that all books that you will use for kinder exemplars should be in Filipino. And we're very happy that, you know, we are promoting our national language, but I also believe with our colleague in um, Eduk that we should be able to teach children the language that they understand. So, kung bisaya sila, magsebuano sila, kung ilonggo sila, magiligay non sila. So, I don't think there's something wrong with us teaching them their uh, mother tongue because it's the best way to teach them um, concepts and skills as well. Thank you. Thank you. The the the, the web or the uh, uh, illustration that you showed us. Yes, sir. That is an illustration of the new curriculum. Based on our interpretation, sir, because when, when we came to DEP and they gave us this Matatag curriculum, and then, of course, as learning exemplar writers, we need to make sense of how this works based also on our experience. By the way, we have a laboratory school, the UP Child Development Center, and it's been using play-based approaches. And, sir, in our many years of teaching, teacher Nam and I, and even our older colleagues, we never prescribed a textbook. <laughs> We never have a textbook, and then we don't buy textbooks at all, but we make our own exercises, we make our own artworks, and we use a lot of common objects um, that are found in the school or at, at home as well. Well, textbooks are also very important, or worksheets and workbooks are important, but for early childhood, we would like to lessen that a bit, especially on the first quarter. Perhaps in the second or third quarter, even the fourth quarter, they can start writing uh, and using uh, what you call these worksheets and workbooks as well. But for the first SEM or first quarter, even for the second quarter, we don't highly encourage using prescribed textbooks because there are so many other ways to do and teaching children, especially very young children, will not only be limited to us buying a lot of very expensive materials. The old curriculum, there are about 257. Yes, sir. And now it's 46. Yes, sir. Uh, so in, 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 in the old curriculum, it means that if there are 200 school days, every day there's a new curriculum. Is that how it is? There, there's a new... Uh, sorry, uh, if there's a new competency. Being there's taught. a new learning competency. But for this one, they have about an average of two. So like, for example, for the... Uh, let me let me uh, look at my computer. Because in, in the reduction, kindergarten is one of the most uh, reduced. Yes. 82%. Yes. So in other words... Um, my, my, again, I'm not a curriculum expert, but uh, common sense just dictating that we're giving now children more time to play, more time to learn, as opposed to bombarding them with a the competency every single day. Yes, sir. But because it's a play-based approach, we incorporate all of these competencies through play. So they are allowed to play. And then it's only not one time. It's like, for example, so for uh, quarter one, knowing who we are and our families, in that particular quarter, you have a total of 20. 
20 competencies. For the second quarter, you have exploring our community, meaning to say children will have opportunities to learn about their communities for an indigenous community, for example. And then knowing, appreciating our country and caring for our world for the third and the fourth quarter, you have lesser competencies. But it doesn't mean that the faculty, uh, that the teachers will concentrate only on the seven competencies, for example. But all the competencies from the first to the second and the third can still be, you know, targeted for all the quarters. Yes. And then te uh, teacher Nam will say something also. I just want to add, uh, sir, that there are competencies that na tumatawid po siya, nagbe-bridge po siya for all the quarters. For example, for letters and numbers. So ito po, tumatawid po siya. Hindi lang doon sa quar specific quarter. Naka-indicate din naman po doon sa matatag curriculum na ganun po yung magiging sequence niya. You can do it in several quarters. And also, the competencies, let's say for example, it's numbers. It, it's not only done during work time. There are, there are many ways. If you use intentional teaching, you can do it when children line up, when you're waiting for transition, in between the routine. You can do it for um, attendance time. You can do it for when you're uh, leaving, uh, preparing to go inside the classroom from, from outside, from outdoor play. So marami po siyang... Um, uh, pwedeng uh, pag-applyan if you are intentional as a teacher and you look at what are your goals, what do you want these children to learn. That's why you can do it several times in the day and also during the week and also during the quarters. That's why, uh, okay, Senator, may I add something? That's why when you talk about teachers being flexible, I think being flexible comes with knowing that you're confident about your craft, that you're confident to be able to find out, and it will all boil down to what kind of pre-service and in-service training they will receive from our higher education institutions in the Philippines. Thank you for that. Um, well, when we visited Finland, I remember, and I was surprised, that they don't have any exams or tests no, for um, their, their, their learners, uh, but they have tremendous amount of trust on their teachers. Their teachers are, they trust their teachers, that their the teachers are teaching the learners what they need to learn. And at the end of the school year, the system trusts that the learners learn. So, uh, but of course, that's a, 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 a whole new different topic. But I just want to share because you mentioned that the teachers um, are, are, they know their craft and they're trained to do that. If I may just add, po, um, the elementary teachers talk about collaboration. Perhaps in the kindergarten level, we can have something like a coaching or a hand-holding with the kindergarten teachers and someone who is a pedagogical teacher para lang po matulungan siya to prepare for the lessons. And it's not so much dishing out or covering the content, but it's asking the right questions. Thank you, thank you for that. Uh, next will be uh, Coco Pea, represented by Dr. Gutierrez. Good afternoon, Honorable Chair, Senator Wynn. Um, I also represent uh, the CAP at the same time our institution, the St. Louis University, together with uh, VP SPK. Um, we are also centers of uh, one of the centers of excellence in teacher education, and uh, we are also supporting um, Department of Education in terms of learner material preparation. Um, our sharing this afternoon, honor, Honorable Chair, is from a collective comments and suggestions from select member schools of the CEP. And uh, we know for a fact that private schools are also compliant of DepEd requirements now from following the different competencies, the mandates, the assessment, and the grading system. I would like to give an high, uh, the highlights and comments given by the select member school of the CEP. Uh, we, we observed no, in the Matatag curriculum, uh, the competencies promote critical thinking and evidence of clearer articulation of the 21st century. Uh, Senator Wynn, uh, just for your information, no, uh, since um, our school is the seat of the regional uh, center for the CAP in the region, we, we assisted our private schools in the region in terms of curricular delivery. Meron po kami mga moves, no? 
uh, dahil karamihan po sa aming mga private schools in the car in Cordillera hindi ho sila nakaka-avail no nung talagang mga trainings po for the for the schools kami na po yung lumalapit sa kanila we convene them at the same time uh, to give them training in terms of uh, curricular delivery we also observe that there is a focus on the foundation and skills nakita po namin ito na ito po yung nakita po namin na talagang kailangan po namin because uh, Ma'am Joyce, now in the private school, because we have a mandate to make our delivery unique and distinct from the public school. So, kailangan ko ito po yung sunod-sunod po namin na competency. We need to upgrade our delivery para hindi naman kami kamukang kamukha ng public. Otherwise, we will close our institution and let the public school do the teaching. So, in the private school, we made you know, some uh, upgrading and modification of our delivery especially in terms of um, strategies, assessment at the same time in the performance tasks. Third, ma'am, uh, we ob also observe the alignment between the performance and content standards. No, It's very clarified, ma'am. Um, yun din po yung ginagawa, ma'am, namin sa private schools po, ma'am, ngayon. No? Na kung ano talaga yung hinihingi na ng competency, kailangan itaas natin ng content. Yun po yung ginagawa po namin, uh, sir, sa private school. Uh, we would like to give some comments and suggestions po sana no? on behalf of uh, the private school. And it is our prayer na sana po na Huwag niyo pong kalimutan ang, ang private schools. No? Sabi, kagi kasi pinag-uusapan na pagkasabing curriculum improvement, delivery, laging public lang. What about us in the private school? Like for example, in the uh, salary increase no, ng mga teachers ng, private, ng public, paano naman kami sa, sa, sa private? No? So sana huwag niyo po kami kalimutan, Sir Wayne, na naglalambing po ang mga private schools. No? At the same time, um, oh, pag-aaral kami sa opo. At the same time, yung, pong, um, yung clear and seamless understanding po ng public and private schools about the matatag curriculum framework. Sana po kasama po lagi ang, ang private in terms of uh, uh, sharing no, yung talagang pinaka-framework po ng matatag curriculum. At the same time, um, isa po sa comment po namin, yung strengthening of formative assessments before giving the summative assessments. And there must have a clear assessment system and assessment calibration. Ano ba talaga yung para natin ng pagmamarka? So, sana maging malinaw po sa atin, lalo na po papasok po yung bago matatag na curriculum. Sana po mailantad po natin dito yung talagang paraan ng pagmamarka po at nakita po natin yung talagang performance. Kaya na po nabanggit po nila yung pagtuturo po ng competency. Sa amin po sa private school, lagi po namin in-inject sa kanila, hindi lamang pagtuturo, it must be the learner should be able to demonstrate the competency. Hindi lang yung naituro ko na, okay na, dapat makita mo na talagang na-master niya at kanya i-demonstrate yung competency po. Uh, Senator Win, uh, I have with me our Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Spike, to give also some input regarding the Matan curriculum. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Dr. Uh, Spike. Good, af good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon uh, to our Chair, uh, Honorable Senator uh, when we're really very grateful that we're always involved in all of these activities to ensure that we're going to provide quality education for all our learners. Actually, I'm also with the, uh, the TEC with Ma'am Jen here. So we were able, of course, to hear a lot of uh, comments and suggestions. And we're happy that these were all integrated by the Department of Education through the different uh, revisions that they were able to do and of course, we would like to commend the Department of Education for ensuring that there will be a focus already on the foundational skills that's needed. Being in a tertiary education, I think one of the observations that we have receiving graduates of the K-12 has something to do with providing a lot of bridging activities for them, of course, to fully uh, understand also the lessons that we do deliver or the competencies or outcomes in higher ed. And we're happy that this was already done through the Matata curriculum and even the clear articulation already of the 21st century skills. And one of the concerns, of course, that we were able to receive from the different associations, private associations in uh, our region has something to do with really strengthening the reading program, and that is what we do appreciate with the Matata curriculum. We have the in-place national reading program and then the national mathematics program. And uh, even in the previous meetings together with our uh, Dep Ed Car Regional Director, Dr. Carino, we were emphatic also on ensuring that the implementation of the MTBMLE program will be according to how it was originally framed because we were able to work with the, uh, the UP, the Liman through Cerno Lasco, and it was actually a very good program. However, in the implementation of this, we had a lot of troubles like in, in CAR, for example, 
uh, Ilocano is not actually is the mother tongue of our students there, but maybe because of some of the problems or limitations during the implementation that we were compelled to teach it as a subject in our laboratory schools, in the private schools, when many of our students are not really using it as a language. We do support indeed MTBMLE, only it should really be implemented according to its uh, uh, purpose Yeah, for uh, us as a language of instruction, we do support it. And we're also very happy as a private institution that we're intensifying values education in GMRC because that's also is one of our advocacy. And we're happy for this. And we do, of course, appreciate it. And again, for all of this. Only I would like to reiterate what was said, of course, by Sir Joy. We also hope, unfortunately, wala pong pilot testing po, Ma'am Joyce, ano, sa private school. So lahat ng mga... Uh, pilot testing schools that we have for this year are all coming from the public school. So, yun din po sana, na sana meron ding um, partnership, pilot testing, sana na nangyari also with the, some of the private schools. And of course, yung uh, hinihilingan natin na sana magkaroon nga ng equal po na opportunities, not only for the public schools, but even for the for the private school. So we're appreciative of all of these initiatives and we do believe that DepEd is trying its very best and we're happy that all the different recommendations of all stakeholders are all integrated in the new curriculum. So what's really very important to us is the implementation and the support that we need to get. Uh, because I'm also coming from a private TEI, it's unfortunate also that while we have uh, very good facilities because it was actually mentioned a while back that we are producing teachers coming from higher education institutions, but the problem is they need to retrain them again when they are with the Department of Education and so on. So I think we really need a support coming from your office, po, sir, <laughs> so that the complementarity will not just happen in the basic ed, but I think it should also happen in higher education institutions because... Uh, Sir, yung mga mayayaman po hindi nila sasabihin, anak, mag-aral ka at kumuha ka ng edu education. So nakasalalay po yan sa scholarship. And then uh, I, tried to, I tried my best to understand how come among teacher education institutions bumaba po ang aming mga enrollees for science and mathematics even if we were identified by DUST as the star for the region. Star for the region, uh, sir, is uh, science and uh, science technology academy of the region. So we have very good facilities, sir. The problem is wala po kaming enrollees to take up visit science and mathematics dahil wala na raw pong scholarship. Wala na yung SEGAP, NISGP, yung mga ganun po, or yung uh, PESFA that were provided in the past at ang ibinibigay din lang po ng mga mula sa kongreso ay grant na lang po na 15,000 hindi po full scholarship. So these are our concerns because uh, SUCs are having of course problems with facilities but HEI, stock performing institutions, have very good facilities only because, I mean, but the only problem is we do not have students to teach, taking all of these very good programs that science po and mathematics. So sana po magkaroon po ng voucher para po din sa teacher ed, katulad ng nangyayari po sa basic ed. Yun lang po, maraming salamat. We'll talk about that. That's a whole big, big topic. <laughs> Unless you want to stay here until 12 <laughs> midnight, well, then we can talk about complementarity. No, but uh, kidding aside, uh, in, in the private schools, Director and Daya, so this is a curriculum for public schools, but this will be the curriculum also for, for private schools, okay? And uh, they are uh, mandated to implement this as well. Okay, all right. All right, but that's a good point by Dr. Speak and... Uh, 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 we should have included um, maybe a few, one or two private schools in the pilot testing. Uh, I'm not very sure if there's time for that, but please consider that. No? Just to uh, show our uh, counterparts in the private sector that they are part of the system. No? Um, uh, I came from Cebu. I was a speaker in SEAP, and uh, I emphasized that uh, we look at the entire system, not, not to divide it by public, private, because at the end of the day, we're teaching Filipino children, you know, Filipino learners. And they're, no matter where they 
where, where they studied, it's it's them who will run this country in the future. No? So we look at the entire system. Yeah, go ahead. Senator Wynn, uh, just uh, a rejoinder to Ma'am uh, VP Speaker's uh, statement. In our region, Ma'am Joyce, uh, together with uh, the regional program of DepEd, uh, the regional office, we had a strong partnership with them. Because in our region, we have a saying, no child is left behind and no school is left behind, whether public or private. Kaya minsan kung kailangan po ng public ng support coming from the private, handa po kami tumulong. Kaya kung meron po kami training na binibigay po sa private school, we also invite our uh, counterpart from the private. Like for example, ma'am, uh, this afternoon we are we're having English uh, English enrichment program. We have invited speaker from U.S. Embassy. We invited also teachers from, from, the, public, from the public school, not only from the private. That is our partnership. And we thank uh, Dr. Carino, our regional program director, for a very close partnership with with the private institutions thank you Pop. thank you thank you for that um we, we have also i i missed this this uh earlier uh, in the earlier part of this hearing uh another uh, pilot school from all the way from mindanao who's here with us uh, dr dones of the mindanao uh, of the sunga suyangan yeah. elementary school surigao uh shargao pala shargao surigao del norte sorry uh, good afternoon, everyone, especially to the Honorable Chair, Senator Wim Gatchelian. Um, in behalf of the Schools Division of Shergao, in the name of our Schools Division Superintendent, we are very happy that we are being invited in this meaningful exchange. And I believe that we are in the same boat, like what, uh, what um, Pilot School, the Malabon, Division has said a while ago that um, we are very positive in embracing this a new and improved Matatag curriculum. Yet I believe that there will be prevailing issues and concerns when it comes to the geographical locations and the erratic weather condition is what we are experiencing in the island. So um, our concern is how could we um, how could we perform well given that kind of conditions um, as we are in the island schools. Um, but anyway, uh, as we read the discussion paper, the, the general shipping paper of the Matata curriculum, we are very glad that finally that we will be having these foundational skills as being given emphasis, um, reading, literacy, and numeracy are given emphasis since as we look into our performance indicators because by the time that we are being invited in this forum, um, we look into and somehow review our development, education development plan, and we somehow um, relate this to our performance indicators in terms of the proficiency level, the performance of our kids in the 21st century, and most of all, our reading ability of our pupils. And then I believe that the teachers uh, may have had a hard time um, delivering the lesson since they need also to attend to or provide more interventions, reinforcement and remediation activities for our um, pupils who are categorized as struggling readers and non-readers. That alone would be an issue for our teachers while they will be delivering and somehow in the attainment of the competencies under Matatag. And I would just like to give some rejoinders when it comes to the, the practice that um, on the learning action cells, the school-based learning action cells um, now is being termed as um, collaborative expertise um, sessions. Um, I believe that we have been practicing that one, only that um, our teachers may have difficulty in how are they going to deliver or how are we going to um, display um, specific behaviors for us to be able to see that this type of collaborative expertise sessions are successful. So I believe that um, our central office will be providing us with capability building and we are very trustful with the process um, as to the provision of capability building of our teachers since we need also to align this to the the standards as being reflected in our PPST, the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers. So um, we are looking into the alignment and we believe that our teachers also need more deepening when it comes to the pedagogy. And as I've said, um, they are having this lack session yet 
um, perhaps this would be enough if there will be no more no um, rejoinder coming from the central office in the provision of the capability building so that they will be able also to share and somehow contextualize along the way. Like in the case of the island schools, how we could contextualize the delivery of instruction for our island islanders, for our young islanders. Thank you, Paul. So far, what's the experience of... Uh, so far, um, your... there is really a positive um, reception coming from our teachers. They, will, uh, they, are, they were able to, uh, based on our initial monitoring and evaluation, they were able to perform well and they were able to deliver it to their kids. Um, uh, the only problem there, which is very manageable and very minute, is on the reproduction of the materials, the learning guides, the teaching guides as well, because we are only given soft copies. So hopefully, um, as we as we will be journeying with the Matata curriculum, um, we will also be given um, the necessary materials, the hard copy copies of the guides. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. We're talking about materials. We invited also Rex Education, um, and um, we want to hear their um, comment on the new curriculum and uh, if you have any um, um, related issues uh, regarding the curriculum. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, um, Mr. Spinoza. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, and thank you very much for inviting us here. Um, uh, first, uh, Attorney Buhain would like to extend his apologies for not being um, here. Uh, uh, first, we would like to congratulate DEPED, and we would like to affirm our support to DEPED in the implementation of the Matatag curriculum. We just hope that the Department of Education would um, continue or engage more the private sector and use its competence and capacities especially in the preparation of learning materials, especially since the book publishing industry is mandated by law, by RA 8047, to support the implementation of um, DepEd's basic education program. In relation to that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to echo the logistical concern raised by Director uh, Mike a while ago, and we would be more than willing to work with DepEd to work out a system for a shorter uh, process of textbook call to evaluation to notice to proceed to um, mass printing and eventually to dissemination. Uh, we, we, we stand ready to, to, to work with the Department of Education in this regard. So aside from uh, providing learning materials to the private, uh, to the public education sector, um, Rex Education and the private educational publishing industry is also supporting the private education sector in a lot of ways. Um, aside from the books that we provide, we also provide them with um, professional teacher professional development program to, to capacitate them. Uh, currently, I believe we have scheduled a lot of cascading session to impart some knowledge on, on the Maratag curriculum to help the private education teachers and administrators make sense and appreciate more the features of the Matag curriculum. Uh, uh, we, we work with DEPED for inputs on this. Also, throughout the year, we provide capacity development program for teachers to implement the, the curriculum. I believe that is something that we would also be doing because as early as now, we have been receiving a lot of requests from our private school clients and partners. Uh, that, that said, Mr. Chairman, and to my former colleagues from DEPED, we would like to be included in sana doon sa pilot implementation doon ng matatag. And I'm not really to intervene, but we would like to be kept in the loop of the developments as we, we anticipate that our private school partners will be um, looking to us to help them prepare for the, the, the nationwide uh, implementation of, of the matatag uh, curriculum. So... Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may introduce my, my colleague here, who has uh, uh, more competence to discuss comments on the curriculum. Bottom line is uh, the, the new curriculum will still be, uh, in the implementation of the new curriculum, textbooks will still be procured from the private sector. Right. So, I mean, that's mandated by law as well. But uh, the intention is to... Uh, uh, develop books 
um, well, um, request the development of books from the private sector, and then they will also publish. No? And government will obviously procure. And uh, the way we distribute books is the private sector will distribute the books. No? That's how the system works. So I think that's the bottom line there. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just to add that um, we just finished with the uh, orientation of the Matatag curriculum with the uh, private publishers. This is already uh, eyeing that uh, by January, we'll be able to proceed with the procurement uh, process already. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Um, any more comments? Magandang uh, po, Senator Wien. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to highlight some commendations for the Matatag curriculum. First on the congested curriculum. A while ago, uh, we were we we asked Director Joyce on certain numbers, the prom two numbers, say for example for the mathematics competencies. So there is a, a massive deduction in terms of the competencies. On the average, right now, uh, for a grade level, the range of competencies is around. 40 to 50. For grade one mathematics, previous uh, current curriculum offers 66 competencies. Now it is reduced to 44 competencies. Actually, pa nakatulong po yung public review para mas pilado pang ma-decongestion curriculum. During the April publication of the first draft, the mathematics grade one offers 53 uh, 57 competencies from the 66. So, and then after the public review, uh, mas na decongest talaga. And I think, hindi lang po ba sa na-decongestion, uh, Senator Wina, no? Uh, when I look into the global proficiency framework of, of UNESCO, uh, nakita namin na very close na yung mga skills na measure under SGD, SGD 4.1 doon sa ating mathematics competencies. So, in terms of global standards, the mathematics grade one specifically is very close adjacent to that global proficiency framework. So, I would like to commend the Department of Education for that. Second, I would like to thank the BCD, the BLR, and the BLD for facilitating a two-month a two-month hand-holding sessions with the uh, publishing, private publishers. So we concluded uh, yesterday uh, and we're in, we were provided some guidelines, no? but there are some recommendations that uh, arise uh, during the session. And also um, the other item on the development of 21st century skills. I think this time, hindi na siya basya nung parang kwento lang or a motherhood statement. The Department of Education show us some indicative and specific initiatives to address this concern. So sabi nga, it should be the strengthening of the 21st century skills as articulated in the revised and, re and re re redefined, I think, or refined framework for the 21st century skills and the articulation of the STEM framework. Yun yung isang, I think, highlight ng Matatag curriculum, the STEM framework, that um, give emphasis on the application of the acquired learning in various STEM disciplines uh, through the engineering design process. The STEM framework articulates its goal of developing 21st century skills through uh, learning opportunities where the students can apply uh, what they learn in the natural learning platforms like mathematics, science, and technology. Also, I would like to highlight the intensification of values formation. I think uh, more than the list of values written in the assessment policy guidelines of the Department of Education, the inclusion and uh, the, institution, the institutionalization of the GMRC, I think, is a tangible uh, evidence of the serious call to intensify values formation uh, alongside with um, with uh, the new learning area called Makabansa. And normally, uh, when I appreciate this Makabansa in the tagline of the Department of Education, which is para sa, isang, uh, para sa batang Makabansa, I think the subject Makabansa is a natural learning platform that will push this tagline into uh, into a reality and more concrete actions. So, so I think there are many... Uh, Matatag curriculum is a promising curriculum. Pero sabi nga nila, ang curriculum ay isang magandang dokumento na pag hindi na implement ang tama, ay mananatili lang niya sa shelf ng, ng Department of Kagawaran. I think the real battle is in the implementation. 
and we need to give premium to our teachers and the capacity building. Uh, the national curriculum ay hindi lamang usapin ng public education. Ito ay usapin din ng private education. Since we subscribe to the national curriculum, I would like to recommend, uh, uh, would you consider item to the kagawaran nagbumuo o bumalangkas isang programa na mag strengthen ng public-private uh, partnership sa aspeto ng evangelization ng curriculum na ito. Kasi maaring ang, ang BCD ay hindi, ka, hindi pinin ko lang Ma'am Joyce, hindi sa sapat ang BCD para i-cover lahat ng eskwelahan uh, uh, ng public at private. Uh, I know BCD is going around the country reaching so many uh, provinces but do not lose sight Busana, of the private schools. And I hope uh, DepEd can look into the opportunity of tapping uh, credible uh, institutions like Ocopeya, CAP, PAC, and other uh, 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 private entities like Tax Education for the evangelization, if I may describe it, the evangelization of the Matatag curriculum. Para po hindi na, para po hindi po na alienate naman yung private education kasi this is a national, I think, interest din po. Uh, for Rex po, Sir, ato, um, Senator Wynne, uh, we are ready for the Matatag uh, Learning Resources. Uh, in fact, noong nag-publish ng April version ang curriculum and then nagkaroon ng revision hanggang sa September 21, we are ready already with the Matatag edition or learning resources, and we are now contextualizing it for the public uh, requirement based on the specifications uh, laid down by the Bureau of Learning Resource. So uh, to DepEd, to the CMT, and to the B and to all the bureaus, no, congratulations for the Matatag curriculum. I think this will really make us Matatag in terms of our goal to improve the quality of education. Thank you. Thank you. Well, just a, a side comment. Uh, I just want to emphasize that um, I, I'm very sure that TEPED nor this committee is um, disenfranchising the private school or the private sector. It's just the sheer number of students that are going into our public schools. You know, that's why the attention is really given to our public schools. And uh, I mentioned this in the SEAP meeting that I believe um, to fix this country, we need to address the problems of our public schools uh, without losing sight also that our private schools are partners because 90% of our students are in our public schools. Almost 90% of our teachers are also in our public schools. And the sheer, it's just a sheer number of issues or the sheer volume of issues that the uh, government is addressing uh, makes it appear that government is neglecting the private school. They're not. No? They're, we're not neglecting. In fact, I demonstrated that the uh, the amount of subsidies being given to the private school has escalated to just last year alone, 50, 52 billion pesos. No? It's just the volume of students. Lang. That's why. But um, rest assured that even in this committee, we are uh, always uh, topping the uh, expertise and the knowledge base of our private schools. No? Um, baka lang may, may feeling na ganun, but we're, we're not, there's no intention of doing that. So, and we have, we have, we have two more um, pilot schools who joined us and uh, um, to give them a chance to uh, share their thoughts, we're calling on Kawayan, Kawayan North Central School, uh, represented by Dr. Cherry Ramos. Uh, she's present online. And then later on, we'll call on Tabogon Central Elementary School um, in Cebu, uh, represented by Dr. Balagda. So we call on Dr. Cherry Ramos first. Thank you very much, sir. Good afternoon to our chair, Senator Wynn. We have here the supporters from the different agencies, both public and private. We would like also to uh, give our uh, experiences as to the implementation of uh, the Matatag curriculum. We have here a simple presentation of what we have learned from uh, this uh, curriculum. 
Uh, we have here the, the pilot school, Kawayan North Central School. Of the 35 schools nationwide, we had, uh, they had chosen Kawayan North Central School as one of uh, the five uh, pilot schools in Region 2. With this, may we just have uh, this presentation of uh, our teaching and non-teaching personnel, which we have uh, 81 of them, 1,915 learners under this pilot curriculum, and uh, 56 uh, using 56 classrooms. With this, we have a total enrollment of 675 pilot learners in Kawayan City. Uh, we have these organized classes for the Matatag curriculum uh, in Kawayan North Central School, uh, Kinder, Grade 1, Grade 4. As uh, you can see, we have uh, eight, seven classes in Kinder, eight classes in grade one, and seven classes in grade four, with uh, seven teachers in kinder, eight teachers in grade one, and nine teachers in grade four. Uh, as I mentioned by uh, our director, uh, both directors, uh, BCD and uh, BLD, uh, we had this transitioning uh, period of which the teachers, school head, and uh, top officials were trained and uh, oriented with the Matatag curriculum from the national down to the division levels. We have here the transition period for 10 days, uh, headed by, of course, our regional director, Benjamin Paragas, of which uh, all offices provided a series of uh, TA to our teachers our, uh, from our regional supervisors and school weekly and SDO supervisors are uh, uh, visiting our pilot schools. Likewise, we have there uh, ensuring the smooth execution of the transition curriculum in Region 2. We have the proper coordination from the different levels of governance so that we can really uh, unleash what's expected from uh, our teachers Likewise, the expected uh, output from its uh, grade level through studying, continue, continually studying and unpacking the learning competencies provided uh, by uh, the central office. Uh, before the pilot implementation, we had also this uh, three-day training as uh, being uh, reported by uh, our directors uh, for our teachers, school heads, and uh, SDO personnel. Included in this uh, SDO personnel uh, were the uh, supervisors, even uh, the top officials were also trained and oriented as to our roles in this implementation. Uh, to ensure understanding and application of knowledge of the new curriculum, demonstration teaching for kindergarten, uh, grade one, four, and seven uh, were observed and processed at the uh, the regional office conducted by uh, the central office and the regional office e officials. We would like also to report that uh, a week before the start of the pilot implementation, we have this uh, mastering of the TC. All teachers involved were uh, convened to unpack uh, the provided LE and uh, WS where collaborative expertise sessions were maximized uh, through the assistance of the regional and division supervisors to quality assure and enhance uh, provided LE and WS based on the learner's needs. Uh, in the uh, pilot implementation phase of uh, the Matatag curriculum, we have uh, this facilitating and uh, hindering factors that we have noted as we uh, are already engaged in this pilot implementation. These are some of the indicators and remarks or findings that we had already surveyed. First is the sufficient provision of supplies and materials via Matatag Fund. And uh, we have these positive learning outcomes that are evident as lessons and well aided with these essential materials in teaching under the new curriculum. Another, complete provision of learning exemplar and worksheets in uh, grade four. The, these also forwarded us to learning activities that well catered with the LEs and worksheets leading to the smooth conduct of uh, activities. 
Another indicator is on positive learning environment, the feedback coming from uh, the learners, teachers, and parents, and other stakeholders. We have uh, these uh, also as initial survey coming from our education stakeholders. The uh, reproduction of learning resources is also well managed as manifested uh, to uh, what we have harvested, needed additional non-teaching to do the job. We are requesting it, uh, this, uh, likewise as been requested by one division in Mindanao. And then the adherence to the O number nine series of 20, 2005, wherein classroom activities were focused on instruction and uh, learning engagement. Last one is on uh, the provided uh, technical assistance from the regional and division offices where we harvested regular monitoring on uh, these um, TAs coming from uh, two uh, offices, from the office of uh, our regional director and uh, from the office of uh, ESDS, where we can uh, they, the school, also harvested immediate feedbacks and uh, incorporating these feedbacks for improvement. However, there's one hindering factor that we have uh, identified uh, in the implementation. We have here the reproduction of worksheets, wherein uh, there's a need really to uh, have this uh, job be done by non-teaching uh, personnel only. So we are giving this as a solution for the meantime, accommodating volunteer teachers for the reproduction of uh, worksheets. But uh, as been mentioned, there will be additional personnel uh, to do the job for the non for the teaching personnel. We have here a survey, the feedback coming from parents, initial survey lang po for the Matatag uh, curriculum implementation. That uh, the Matatag curriculum is uh, systematized for both the learners and teachers. Literacy and numeracy are intensified in the early grades. Kids are more engaged and excited to go to school. And from the learners, they had mentioned the mastery level is achieved in a weekly basis. The teachers uh, are friendly and smart. They continue to become friendly and smart. Worksheets are, are complete for grade four. No learners were left behind from uh, the lesson and learners uh, lessons were taught according to their learning pace. Feedback coming from the teachers, we have this uh, as uh, recorded. The delivery of the lessons was holistic and seamless. Uh, teachers are too excited and engaged in uh, facilitating the teaching learning process. More realistic, no duplication and redundancy of learning competencies. And there's an acquisition of 21st century skills uh, that's still feasible with the Matatag curriculum. Uh, with the practices of uh, SDO Kawayan City, in regard to the implementation of Matatag curriculum, we have this strong collaboration with the stakeholders, local government, which uh, attracts full support to the pilot school. Teachers uh, resourcefulness, resilience, and positive stand towards the new curriculum. Close working tandem between the SDO and implementing school. non -strap stop provision of TA and coaching from uh, the regional office. Open communication with the RO and CO for immediate response and clarifications to uh, queries and concerns. Massive advocacy and information dissemination through MANCO meetings, fora, and media increased level of awareness, acceptance, and support. Capability building for teachers and school heads on the new curriculum, revalues formation, pedagogy, content, technology, and uh, the like. Regular conduct of collaborative expertise session, as indicated in the class program. Technical assistance to teachers in the conduct of classes under the Matatag curriculum is uh, being manifested as uh, a regular monitoring, as regular monitoring transpires. Uh, proactive and adaptive school head, presence of SDO superintendents and uh, the personnel of uh, SDO who are fully uh, supported to the Matatag curriculum. Presence of uh, competent kindergarten teachers who could devise contextualized worksheets to aid their teaching. Teachable and digital uh, savvy teachers of kindergarten grade one and grade four. And uh, 
course, cemented partnership with the local government unit, the SCPTA officials on this uh, holistic endeavor. Likewise, making use of slide decks and automated uh, resources such as TB as instructional tools and materials during classes adds learning motivation and sustains learning uh, in interests. Teachers have a device mechanism scheduled on the preparation of slide decks uh, that is them uh, necessary. And uh, this uh, will sum up the practices we have in SDO Kawayan uh, City. Uh, to our uh, chair, Senator Wynn, we had uh, heard along with our partners, likewise, the plans from uh, the Department of Education. And we had would like to affirm this as planned by our uh, central office, the Department of Education, along with our partners, that we too in uh, Region 2 had this um, partial a uh, way of saying uh, the Matatag curriculum uh, is really worth taking, uh, worth implementing for our learners and the community people of uh, Hawaiian City. That would be all, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chair Ramos, for the very comprehensive uh, presentation. I'm happy you, to uh, hear that the learners find our teachers there warm and smart. No, so, but uh, I think that's a product of decongesting the curriculum. They're, di na sila nagmamadali magturo. Um, lastly, um, we have uh, our friends from the Visayas, uh, from Tabagon Central Elementary School in Cebu, represented by Dr. Uh, Balagtas. Dr. Balagtas? Still there? Or uh, Miss Cinco, Corenda Cinco. Ah, uh, I think they already logged on because dinner time. Na. Um, I'm actually trying to finish before seven. We didn't prepare dinner for you guys, so. But uh, I think we have uh, exhausted all of our resource persons, uh, and it's been very fruitful, enlightening, as well as um, re rejuvenating you know, in, in my terms, uh, because um, I think this is a long time coming. I, I know Dr. Dad San Antonio has been uh, waiting for this, and uh, it's finally here. Um, our centers still want to learn about uh, uh, the details of the curriculum, and we will do that in the next session. But so far, from what I hear from Malabon, from uh, Surigao, and from... Uh, uh, Kawayan, uh, so far the implementation is smooth. Uh, it's welcomed by both teachers, learners, and parents. And one thing common that I've heard from all of them, the supply of materials. No? I think the supply and the support of materials makes a big difference. And that's one thing that we need to sustain until the full implementation of this law. And this is where the private sector will come in to support us. So... May I say congratulations no? uh, in the initial stage and um, uh, we look forward to the full implementation of this uh, curriculum and rest assured that the committee will support the Department of Education in their needs to make this successful because the success of this curriculum is the success of the Philippines. No? So thank you very much. So we will suspend this uh, hearing uh, and we'll see you next time. Marami salamat. Thank you.